Speaking of Asian guys who sing, Jin, I had no idea you're so talented. Seriously, oh, thanks, man. Like uh, I just scrolled, through, happened to re- come across a uh, Instagram post of you playing. First, uh, first off, I had no idea you played. A, I, a, I didn't know you played. B, I didn't know you played so well. And C, I had no idea you could sing so well. Thank you. Mm-hmm. That's very sweet. Very sweet of you. Yeah, he can sing, man. You guys want to start? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Unless double check, double check, double check. I check. think Mike's, Mike's a professional. <laughs> professional. Not in many things, but at this, yes. I have good news and bad news. Good news is Mike is here. All right. Mike Catherwood is here. Good news for some. Yes, great news for mainly everybody. Bad news is Brian passed away. Oh. He passed away. The he had a good run. The corona caught up with him. He had a he good run. He's 53. Yeah. No, Brian's on vacation in Utah and left me to... At the helm of the battleship, he, he, this is this is Brian Kelly in a nutshell. Friday after the show, he goes, "Hey, dude, gone all next week. That's it. <laughs> ah, that's it." I'm like, "Wait, what?" He's like, "Gone all next week, man. So figure it out." I'm like, "All right, dude. All right." I will no. say that that's the big. There, there was so many downsides. Like, but there the big upside to working, like having Drew, Doctor Drew, as your partner, it was like your. Your one and two punch when you're doing a radio show was that if Drew had to do something like that, it was 400 apologies, his manager trying to line up someone else, like a, a, a greeting card coming in the mail. Oh, like nice. he's just such a nebbishy, oh, overly nice. worried. Could you you and Doctor Drew worked how long together? About a decade. Yeah. A while, yeah. dude. And and that's that's Love Line, the radio show, and then. Two TV shows and another AM, Fuck. like political talk show. And you, I so. mean, you guys have to be close. We're really close. Like we, Brian's I mean, my best friend, yeah. so he gets a pass. Yeah. If we were just business partners, we wouldn't have made it this far. And I it would kill, I would honestly, kill. it doesn't work forever if you're if you're not friendly. Like even like the super talents of like, uh, um, Francesa and Mad Dog, they're they're as good as they come in sports talk. And they just couldn't sustain it because they could. They did not like it. Opie and Anthony, the best. Opie and example. Anthony, yeah, that was going to say example. that's the best example. An- Anthony, especially like Opie, as far as just like X's and O's, doing it, getting the interest in, keeping the flow going. Opie's really, really good. Anthony is like super talent. Like he's a fucking freak of nature, super talent. And they couldn't sustain it, man. And, and even with Jim there too, and Jim's another like Jim fucking Norton's, home run hitter. Oh, uh, dude, you know? Jim Norton's as talented yeah. as they get too. He's awesome. But you can see why like big bands break up after a while. Dude, it's, once you get like, first off, like artistically, doing something together artistically, uh, collaboratively, is hard. Then you throw in the business aspect of it. Talking it's it's almost it's almost impossible. I can't believe people do it at all. Like I can't believe there's any level of success rate. Agree. I think for Brian and I, it was like when we first started. Like I had fighting, but then this was also like my baby. This is all I had. Yeah. But it was based off. You to give credit all the credit to Brian was based off Brian's idea where I was fighting, just moved to LA. He goes, Hey, let's do or he goes, I have the Brian Callen show, it has fourteen listeners. Come on there. We go on there, we have this weird chemistry. We didn't know each other that well, but we had this weird chemistry. He goes, Dude, we should do this every week. I didn't want to do it. And then I committed to it. And then I was like, If I'm in, dude, I'm in. But yeah. we're doing it. And he's like, All right, I'll see you every Thursday. So then we started doing it and then it became like my thing. Like I loved it, I was obsessed with it, and but Brian had all this other stuff going on. You know, he's acting, he has stand up, he's doing the ten minute podcast, he has all this other stuff going on. But this was my thing. Yeah, you know. So then it became like I, I at first had resentment towards him because I was like, dude, why don't you care about this as much as I do? And he's like, and I get it, you know, especially you know, I was younger. You know, he's like, well, I, dude, I have all this other shit going on, man. Like this is whatever. He dude. does now though. He may not say that to you, but like we've had conversations uh, off the air just Brian about and I. firing the kid. He does. Oh yeah, yeah. different. Animal I mean, now that. it's like it's it's his baby. I yes. mean, I think uh, for both of you, I think for any man or woman who makes a living doing stand up, that's always your your passion, mm-hmm. your number one passion. But I think as far as like professional priorities, I still think this has got to be Brian's number one right now. Yeah. 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 For sure. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just. Uh, you know, especially when we first started, it was just like, you know, it was, it was like I cared so much, but he had everything going on. And then, you know, you, you go through ups and downs, man. But if we weren't best friends, there's no way, dude. Yeah. There's no way. Yeah, I I mean, Drew and uh, Drew and I are the same way. I like it. And I, I had a hard thing coming into it because, 
like filling Corolla shoes is not it's just not possible it's impossible and so i i struggled so hard both professionally and personally with drew trying to be adam jr and i couldn't do it and and it wasn't until like six months a year in where i was like look like adam's michael jordan yeah i can be let me be bj armstrong yeah i can it doesn't mean let me be horse I, grant it doesn't mean i'm shitty no it just means like i'm not going to be the next different tools mj but I different can, but, tools yeah. yeah so but you bring your own set and of um and uh drew and i got when we got personally close like to the point where our relationship mattered much more than the show yes that's when things just it just became it, it honestly it became like like uh cruise control you know to do to do content you know whatever that's how it is for me and brian like yeah. we never we've never once like there's no you guys know this there's no pre-production like there's just we don't get like talk about oh we let's talk about this never yeah you know never and I, I i don't think you have to be legitimate like like best friends like drew and i you know we we go hang out we we, we go to dinner with our families we like go, your families we go together? Pump iron together and we like hang out like drew and i seek each other out to spend our personal time together. he's also a great guy to be, have the as best. friend like yeah. even even for me i remember I, he was gonna come on here maybe was in, we were gonna do some show together and he couldn't do it and he said he called left a voicemail which nobody does anymore yeah. left this long voicemail and then sent like three texts explaining why he couldn't i was like dude i i swear man it's all good like, he's that guy and he's like i'll make it i guarantee i'll make it up to you guarantee yeah. it and then obviously came back on he's super like drew obviously is an entertainer he makes a living as a, an entertainer he's a, a hollywood dude but because his dna is a physician so he doesn't handle things the same way like an entertainer does. Like everything's no, about like I'm yeah. so I let you down. It's I like let a you down. You're like, yeah, you know? I'm like, God, dude, I'm, now it's getting suspicious. <laughs> yeah, Let's yeah, go. Yeah. What do you need, man? What do you need, money, Doctor Drew? Why are, you, why are you being so friendly, man? And I, but, you know, and also I think like once I started, I, I had a real insecurity about like not what do I add to a show sitting next to Doctor Drew. What do I add to his life personally? And because he's so smart he's so cool he's so buff and he's so handsome all the people love he's got this this kind of id thing going on where i look at him and he's kind of like a tyler durden version yes. of me as the as the edward norton character yes and then i realized i was like oh what i provide him is actually pretty substantial i give him a total pass to be a boneheaded 14 year old dude and talk about pussy and, and ben halen and, yeah. Yeah. and he, he which he needs he really i realized like he actually really likes that a bit and i was like you smell my fart you know yeah, you guys are great for each other is it is it classy is it tasteful <laughs> probably not but like there was value there yeah hell know? yeah there's value there yeah i love dr drew man you know, look at you guys yeah i love corolla too yeah there's just i don't know man these guys are doing the goddamn thing we we're gonna try and get them on here but last minute kind of replace yeah no and yeah of course i, I got another uh text this morning because you hit me up about coming on and, yeah. and filling in for brian and i was like yeah what you know we we talked about potential guests and i threw out names of like just my favorite people that i know live in la great guests. and so i was great you know i was naming, like like Ian mccall and and, and jason ellis was the first guy that came to my mind i haven't seen jason forever and i love jason he knows he this. he would have been here in a second it's just he has radio right, right now, now yeah. so um but then of course you know drew's name came out and so i asked him and uh, his his exact response was oh fuck uh, uh maybe i shouldn't be saying this out loud because you know he's so buttoned up but yeah he, he was like oh fuck okay give me a second and he wrote me back he's like i have to pod do my pod at uh, your mom's house um with with tom and christina he's like i have to do that exact time and then i got another message this morning he's like i'm so sorry i would have loved to come out yeah, and be with you guys dude. and i was like yeah, yeah it's all good man he's such a good dude man yeah, I think uh, it just, yeah, I can't, I can't imagine like the, you know, obviously you and Dr. Drew are a great team. There's just certain, there's like teams, man, you know? Yeah. Because it bums me out like when you hear certain like guys that hate each other or like I heard, I think was it Metallica for a long time? They wouldn't talk to each other. Yeah. They would just get like backstage. They were in their own dressing rooms. They didn't, they would rehearse like hours before, but they didn't talk at the rehearsal. Then they'd hit the stage, and that that's it, man. Then they go, there's, they fucking hated each other. I, it's got to be hard. I, I, I think that's Metallica. I'm not going to yeah, sit what? here and pretend like I know the guys in Metallica. Like, no, me neither. Like, oh, if no. they saw me, they'd be like, hey, Mike, how you doing? Oh, Great. To, but I, I, I know have, the security guy. Because of my, I've been so lucky to, to, you know, all the luxuries that came with working at K-Rock for so long that I have spent 
time oh, yeah? with different members of Metallica. And I will tell you that like what makes them one of the greatest rock and roll bands of all time, hands down the 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 kind of the trailblazers of American metal, but also like they will it forever be known as one of the greatest rock bands of Love all time them. is um also what makes it probably very hard to be in Metallica and that is Lars is a fucking taskmaster. Like Meaning? Lars Lars is a no nonsense does not fuck he does not suffer fools like he is a no bullshit. It, Better he, be on and, time. And, um, well, he would fire Brian Callen. <laughs> oh yeah yeah. Yeah, 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 yes, yes. He I'm would. not Lars, but yeah, yeah. I, you know what's weird? I've heard that he's kind of he's the captain of the ship, right? Yeah, and, and maybe not musically, but as far as like getting shit done, there's no and you and by the way, and not even just from watching the documentary and, and, and things like that. Or, and I'm a big fan. Obviously, I know kind of like behind the scenes and shit. But if you just hang out with any members of the band and like some of this, some of the uh, management and stuff, like it, it's very clear. It's, he it's runs like, the show. yeah, the, the, you need those guys though. Otherwise, yeah. you're all gonna be a bunch of fuck ups. You're probably not gonna get where you need to go in life with your band. Yeah, I'll tell you what's interesting is homeboy on the right, uh, James Hetfield. Yeah. James, uh, yeah, Hetfield came on Rogan. Mm. And he talked about bees for about <laughs> ninety minutes. I was, I was broken hearted. Hetfield, fuck your bees. Let's talk about some fucking rock stories dude well the thing but about for him Hetfield, it's like dude let me just talk about these i think demons. he's a really important figure because oh my god he is he really is like the animal representation of metallica especially after cliff died hetfield especially like the 86 hetfield with the long fucking hair oh, and the dude. no no beard it's just like he looked like a lion look at him yeah, he, yeah. he'd hold that fucking explorer dude, body dude, and gets dude, in. Dude, he just looks dude, so dude. tough fucking, yeah and and uh he's now as he's become you know a grown man he sits back and he'll talk openly about like how fucked up his childhood was and how fucking angry and how sad and how empty he felt and uh i think that's really important because to so many like macho dudes around the world james hetfield's like your icon yeah. you know and it's like it's nice to see be like oh you feel that way yeah, you're yeah, not impenetrable yeah. you know you feel you're like not, a fraud yeah. too yeah that's cool man yeah it's, isn't it weird now that you have kids to think about the way like you hear certain people the way they're raised and yeah. you have kids like oh fuck dude it's um it's I, heartbreaking um there's a there's a very speaking of like talented radio dude there's a very um amazing sports radio duo based out of los angeles but they're national petros and money and uh, matt money smith of petros and money what used to be name. he used to be the the uh sports guy for kevin and bean the radio show that i work for and um he this is probably like i don't know 2005 ish or something and you do you guys remember the movie mystic river that came out that you bet your sweet yeah ass. sean penn great film great and sean movie. penn's awesome in it uh tim robbins this is, it's a really really good film and uh <laughs> I was probably like 25 or something. I didn't know shit from right, shit. Bro. And I go see the movie and I come back to work uh, after the weekend and I was like, money, got to go see Mystic River. He's like, can't do it. I'm like, why, dude? You know, I can't watch a movie like that. I got children. And I go, well, dude, it's, it's a fucking movie. What do you yeah. mean you can't? He's like, no, nah, I'm going to watch a movie about a dead daughter. I, 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 and then I, at the time, I was like, what a fucking dummy. You kids, I know. 10 years later, I was like, Oh, I totally get Boom. I totally get that. You know, I'll watch like even just like channel surfing, I'll see like forensic files. As soon as it's like, and then they found the six year old girl's I'm body, out. I'm like, nope. I, mean, I, can't I can't do, do it. I can't do it. And I, I can't do any of that. Yeah, bullshit. I totally didn't get it back then. I, I'll never forget that when the money because I, I was like internally, he's a really good guy, so I didn't want to say anything, but internally I was like, What it's a fucking movie. Stop it. Just divorce yourself from it. And no, now none I get of it. that. None of that. None like uh, lovely bones with uh Mark Wahlberg. Fuck yeah. yeah. Oh dude. That, I believe when you that have was kids. You watch that, you're like, "Fuck, dude." Oh no, that was Winter's Bone. I was gonna say, I thought that was our first exposure to Jennifer Lawrence because I remember watching Winter's Bone, and I was like, "I have a Winter's Bone in my fucking <laughs> Levi's." <laughs> I didn't know what a Jennifer Lawrence was, and I saw that, and I was like, Winter's "Hello, there." I don't think I've ever seen it. It's all right. No, there's certain, there's certain. Yeah, when you have kids, man, there's just certain shit you can't do. Nah, I haven't sure. seen that movie. Well, it's like even like uh, on Showtime that out their new documentary Outcry. Yeah, have you seen it? No, but you you were talking about it last time, and I'm telling you, I don't know if I can do it, man. It's like well, yeah, it, I guess the 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 story, the narrative isn't so much about the kids getting molested. That's a byproduct, unfortunately. It's about yeah. how the judicial system in Austin, Texas, kind of fucks this kid over, yeah. and bad cops and the the bad judicial system, but. Um, 
you know, when they're talking about it, you see a four-year-old and my son's four and he's talking about what this guy did to him, you're like, what the? I started overanalyzing everybody my son comes in contact with. Yep. From dropping off at school to everything. You just start going through all of it. And Jim, I to, then I had a conversation with him like, hey, dude, you know, no one's allowed to, you know. Yeah. And it's, and it's, it's strange. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not complaining about it. I, I like that I found that aspect of myself and that it, it really, I think it is just instinctive it becomes a part of like the animal side of us papa bear but it's it's strange how radically you change and you change your 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 oh priorities God. and and how you view everything and like i used to be because I, I i'm i'm generally like i'm i am i'm a people person i like people i'm the guy i know it sounds dumb i'm the guy who when i sit down on a plane next to a stranger oh, and they start talking Kathy? to me <laughs> no when they start talking to me i'm like happy your about game it. yeah i'm like oh okay yeah what's your deal where oh, you wow, are yeah cool. where are you from oh you're from a different oh, tell me about fucking nigeria yeah, i, I want to nice hear guy, about yeah. it but i'm so much more cynical of people now that i have a child because i, I all i do is worst case see see what could potentially be their negative motives I know. you know you know so i don't know it's a bummer man it is a bummer but then like also really loving a woman and like having a relationship where you take on their well-being where you really become concerned that changes me that changed me too like i i i i, I even though i only have one child and she's a dog she's a she's a do you girl guys not want more i do i want Your more wife doesn't it's, it's not that she doesn't it's just that my wife's an actress. When we had Magnolia, my daughter, she was on a series. She was on Undateable. And um, with with uh, Whitney and Chris everyone, with and like uh, Ron Funches and Chris and Brent Morin and Rick Glassman. And it was like, I love it was Rick. like, yeah, Rick's, Rick's amazing. I just did his podcast. So Rick's, Rick's a really so interesting funny. dude. I love Brent. I love all those guys. David Finn. It was like a great group of dudes and, and, and Bridget and gals and stuff. But th there was like a set schedule. Like she knew, okay, it got picked up for a second season. She doesn't have to work till September. Let's start fucking in, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Let's start yeah. fucking in. Uh, the, Let's the, knock it out before we In October back. and then you'll be fine and you can lose the baby weight and get yeah. back to work. And then since Undateable, she's, she's had jobs and it's been great, but there's no stability. And my you wife just doesn't know when she can be 30 pounds heavier. And now she's 43 and we've kind of both just we don't really talk about it but we kind of understand it's like okay well i guess we'll that's a bummer right and a but, little, but it's we, a little bit of a bummer right it, it's a super because bummer. i guarantee you and I, I tell my girl this all the time like our you know my son's four the boston's seven months now he'll be eight and they're cute as fuck i'm yeah. like you're telling me you don't want another one of these like boston's so cute and good baby I'm like you're telling me you don't want another one of these here's the you thing, don't though. want another one of these do you know you how have your mind i there's no more unfair deal than having kids when it comes to like the difference between guys and guys oh my god like it's all her you it's so much easier for you and i to be like you sure you don't want another one because all i have to do is fuck you and shoot a load inside of you <laughs> and then it's, which is something i would love to do anyway would like do that's anyway. the extent of yeah. my fucking job you have to go through hormonal hell you have to get fat. You have to, get you have, to have a fucking human body explode you. You're also going to be sick for about nine months. And hate everything. Oh, you think Corona is bad? Why don't you try getting pregnant for nine months? So my, and my girl gets super sick. So I don't want to. I don't want to pressure because I, I I did step back. I was like, honestly, can you think? Can you imagine something more unfair than just like what we have to do compared to what they still have to though, do. dude? That's life, man. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's the that's the that's the way the big man made us. I tell you, we could have ten of that kid. He's so fucking <laughs> yeah, good. You so. have ten of them. He's so chill. Your so kids easy. are super cute, man. Yeah, super cute. Tiger your older, man. your older is gonna. You seriously, you need to staple condoms to his dick. Because <laughs> I would just be so scared. He's gonna like. There's just gonna be so many ladies dripping off that dude. He's gonna be killing it. It's trouble for yeah. sure. Then Boston's just this massive baby. It's hilarious. Yeah, there's nothing better though, man. Yeah, yeah you're uh you have you have Mexican children, don't you? Yeah, half Mexican. Oh, good Isn't that boy. weird? Yeah, that's fantastic. <laughs> fantastic. You. Especially they decide to be boxers. Fantastic. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah hopefully yeah. not. I hopefully not. Well, I mean, it is that I mean that's a thing. I don't think people they like to talk about cultural things like that that are uh like evolutionary ideas that are cultural. But that I mean, dude, that's a thing. You can't deny it. Like how many amazing Irish 
Puerto Rican, Mexican, Cuban. you know, like there's just certain Cuban there. Like there's combat athletes that come from certain places in the world where it's like, wow, there's just thousands Russia. of you. It's right? just it's what they, Russian it's literally, yeah. it's like in their DNA it's, for, it's, but like in Mexican, sure. like that Mexican style of boxing, have you ever seen a Mexican style who's super flashy and and he's kind of Floyd Mayweather and like pure defense? No, no. they get booed out of the goddamn. No, they arena. literally get clowned. I yes. mean, uh, like there. Were, I mean, at the beginning of that, of the beginning of Canelo's career, it was like he's not what we're looking for. You know, yeah, he had to really prove himself. And then There's, someone gave him a chat. I mean, and then he's like, okay, that you guys like me to march forward and knock dudes out. Check, got it. I understand that, I'd like that that old fashioned, like that Mexican style of stand, for, you know, take take two to give one. Just keep plying for it. I get that because it's exciting and it is, it's inspiring because you feel like it's representative of the heart of the people. Like God, what I don't like and what I what I fucking hate is this: if you're not a street guy, you're not a real Mexican. I like how Oscar De La Hoya got shit on for being for his career boy, for being, being a guy who again? who you was a gold the golden boy who was always wearing his suit. He always fucking Oscar De La Hoya bends over backwards for east east la oh, he's ne he bleeds he this city be more and, he, and, and 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 uh, just because he doesn't have a fucking you know like like street accent and he doesn't just because he put some high him. heels on just because know? he <laughs> just because he wears laundry but i you know <laughs> who was, he was the bo was Why it vargas he do that he has the boxing gloves on and, and the high heels I'm was crazy. it vargas that talked that whole shit going into their fight where like you're not a real mexican you're fucking you're soft, and then Oscar beat the brakes off him. Beat the I think shit it was, Yeah, I think it was Vargas. These, I mean, dude, how, that's a solid how, picture. How though. hot would she have to be for you to dress up like that? I'd love to see her. But um, I'm a bitch, though. I I would like there's oh, a few drinks. I'm like yeah, I'll, a couple million girls that could get me to wear that. Agree. Yeah, whatever they want. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. I'm dude. I'm, you uh, know how blitzed he was out of his mind on cocaine? Oh, dude, he was he was like. He was like Led Zeppelin in their prime fucked up. I got a story for you after the show about him. <laughs> <laughs> after the show. I, yeah. I, I don't want to air his laundry out like that. I got a personal story about him. But uh, there's there's a like kind of a second coming. Uh, hopefully he turns into Oscar Del Hoya. But have you seen Ryan Garcia? He's the best. He's also like not your typical Mexican. Like he's good looking. He's a monster. But you know, like he and might he's a, You know what I like about Ryan is that the talent's clearly there i mean that i don't i don't know if that's deniable what i like about him is that he's got a chip on his shoulder mm -hmm. he's like oh really i'm i'm just a pretty boy that's fast i don't i'm not tough i'm not like, oh watch this but he's not, and he's sitting there he's sitting there fucking cracking the paul brothers on on instagram you know just breaking ribs and shit he's yeah, he, like you know he's like crossed over too you me? know from pop culture like youtuber because he's a legit boxer too yeah he's a fucking monster man yeah, he's and it's a monster it's fucking awesome too because you know you realize like that's there's the there's the crossover i mean there's the the obvious cultural build-in of like yes he this fighter becomes a hero to the puerto rican community to the mexican community but but that in turn just because of sheer numbers then they become a essentially an american icon i mean they what, what canelo has become oh, canelo's in, the biggest star what canelo's in become in in southern california texas new mexico in, in places like that. he's a, he's a fucking icon you know yeah he you know they showtime asked me to do my pound for pound list he's always number one yeah. you look at you know he's always number one have you uh not to switch subjects but you ever thought i mean i can't believe i'm asking you this have you ever thought of living somewhere else has this pandemic made you want to live somewhere else yeah and this pandemic hasn't done it but really? a, a lot Maybe of just before it has? life experience yeah really mm -hmm. but it's hard being in show business to live somewhere else it now is. it's a little easier with what we do but it's tough man I, I i battle back and forth like me and my girl in two weeks go to austin to look at house she's never been there we go look because we've been thinking about moving there and then it's like i'm talking to theo and brian obviously there's a million moving parts for me to go there because it's not like I just have one show. If it was just showtime, just below the bell, I could get up and go. Yeah. We can shoot food trucks from there. We can fly fighters out there. Well, Chin and Cat, we'll figure it out. But it's like I have, you know, I have King and the Sting. I got below, I got Fighter and the Kid. So there's True. all these moving pieces, and everyone's down. But then when you look at the logistics of it, it just, it just, it gets hairy, man. Here's here's. And then I, my thing is, it's like, and I don't mean to interrupt you. I'm like, no. is it because right now it's just like la's on fire like yeah. la's so extreme yeah but when where it's not on fire it's amazing here in new the, york's extreme when it's not on fire it's amazing the the real problem with los angeles not southern california la the real downside to it is that the perception 
is absolutely not the reality. Meaning? And that you get turned off, all of us do, we get turned off by the superficial nature of the entertainment industry and everyone's just worried about image and not they're not real substantial people and there's no culture and the traffic and the overpopulation and all this. And that is undoubtedly real and there are definitely people, I mean, the entertainment industry kind of lives and breathes here that are just consumed with the industry. They don't really give a shit about actual human interaction and they don't care about people's feelings. But in the 11 million or so people that live in LA County, like like 0.08% work in the fucking entertainment industry. Yep. And I always use the Laker game as an example. The first three rows of a, at a Laker game, they are those douchebags. They are those guys yeah. with the sunglasses on indoors with a chick that's like 45 years younger than them. And they're, they, But the reality is, is there's 18,000 other seats and in a Laker LA. game and it's all, it's a fucking mechanics and, that's LA. and, and, and truck drivers yep. and cops and fucking normal people. Yep. And the, the image that is given is that all of Los Angeles is these the first three scummy rows. dudes. And by the way, 99% of those shit bags aren't from LA. No. You know, every, one, every goddamn guy I talk to in the internet, entertainment industry is like, ah, oh, pizza's better in New York where I'm from. Oh, did you, well, in Boston, you, you, know, you, can get, you can get yourself a nice fucking hero sandwich. I'm like, oh, really? That's all you're going to do is... I just, like, I'm not... Mo I'm the worst... I'd be the <laughs> oh, worst really? superhero ever because I'm l the least ambitious person. If I had fuck you money, if I was Jeff Bezos, all I'd do is buy a gigantic office building in L.A., and just stay plaster here. it with nothing but Dodger shit yeah. and like 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 uh, like Mr. Cartoon graffiti and everything. Just sick. like make it LA centric and Low force riders. every fucking asshole who gets off a fucking plane from Pittsburgh and and Florida all over the country. And the first thing they do is talk about how much better their hometown is. That's all LA is. I know. In reality, though, you're you're this much of the the rest of the city has this unbelievable vibrant culture that is not really looked at. It's just like like ten years ago. Everyone in the world looked at New Jersey as being the dudes on Jersey Shore. Yes. Like that, 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 or Sopranos. Like, yeah. They, they, they get a bad rap. Have nothing, you been to Jersey? I lived in Jersey. Jersey's for a oh, while. you have? Yeah. I didn't know that. Jersey's, Jersey's one of the dope. most Jersey is one of the most educated places in this country. It's filled with some of the most nice, thoughtful people in the world. And yeah, sure, there's a bunch of guidos and a bunch of, you know, you know, like absolute. But you again, know, that's savages. the point oh one percent. The majority absolutely. of the people yeah, some of the best people I know, Brian Daly, like a ton of people live in Jersey. And uh, the, you know, I my wife gets really concerned about like, what are we gonna do? We can't live in LA With because kids? of fill in the blank. Yeah. And kids I say, get dicey. Don't, don't And you're in Venice, right? Yeah. No, don't get me wrong, Venice is dangerous. But I always go like look, there's human shit don't, everywhere, Mike. Fall for the trap. Don't take the bait because you, as an actress, are surrounded by this segment of it that gives it the bad rap. You know, these people that are, and, and I've watched my wife, who's successful in acting, I've watched her get fucking decimated by people who are just so callous. They're, what do you mean? Oh, like agents and like yeah, they're just, they're just mean people. They don't care. They're not nice people. Like because well, they don't. I don't think that that's a stereotype. There's there's far too many people in politics and in show business that lose sight of just basic cur courtesy, and they are not nice. You know? I, I, well, that's everything, Mike. Sports. Yeah. I mean, go have a talk with the. You know, I don't know now the matchmakers. They're, they're a lot better, but go have a talk with Dana White, man, or yeah. anyone who runs a business or have these. They have these decisions to make. They just don't. They ju it's almost like they don't view human life the same as others, you right. know? Because I think they're just like, on to the next, on to the next. It's just, what's next? And they're like, they, they have shark eyes. It's just all black. You're like, what? how the fuck did you get this way? I've, I've met with agents here where it's the same way. It's like, how? You wonder, though, is there value in it? In a, in a job like being a politician, being, being, a, yeah, being be an agent, brother. being a, a studio exec, Maybe there's there's actual benefits to being a sociopath. Well, there's a reason know? why they're yeah, like that. Yeah. It's just a bummer. It's heartbreaking. It is go, a bummer. Dude, go to the NFL. You when you get to the NFL, man. I mean, you know these coaches. It's like what? I don't give a fuck, dude. Yeah. Catch the ball. Next, yeah. and you're like, oh god. Or a GM or a head coach. At the same time, you got to understand, like the even compared to most people who make shit tons of money the pressure and the amount of money that other people have writing on you in your performance i kind of understand where you like there's probably isn't any room for for you know 
concerns about people's emotions. If no, a guy is not, not if a guy or a gal is not holding it up on the field, you're gone. I mean, you kind same kind in Hollywood of, though. If a guy or a gal isn't holding it up, or if they're not right for the part, they're not gonna be like, yeah, you know, this. Just, they're just like, next, get the fuck out of here. Yeah, that. I mean, and that. Look, it is a meritocracy in that sense where you know, kind of talent dictates. What I don't like about especially sports is a little bit easier because sports is black and white. It doesn't matter if you're best friends with the coach or if you're a nice no. guy or if you played the political game behind the scenes. If you don't, if your fucking shooting percentage is sixteen percent, you're not going to make it no, in the NBA. If you if you hit one eighty three for three seasons in the NBA in the major league, you're done. Acting's all there is like this thing, and I, I've talked about it with so many of my friends with that you know I I go. Just keep your chin up because it's very frustrating for someone to really, to know, not to think, but to know that there's other things at play that are preventing you from being as successful as you want to be besides hard work and drive. Like when you were really driven, when you're hardworking, when you devote yourself in every, and there's still other factors that get in the way, that's really, really fucking frustrating. And I know life's not fair, but that sucks. At least with, you could be a gigantic cocksucker. But if you're fucking awesome in sports, no one's stopping you. No one's going to prevent, you know, unless, unless no. the extremes. I mean, you know. but, well, acting is a little bit like baseball where you're going you're to go about three for 10. Yeah. And if you go three for 10, you're fucking killing it. Yeah. You can go about one out of 10. I, I, I also really worry about how, like, you know, what was really exciting and what made me fall in love with movies in particular was that when I was like, first getting to the age where I could appreciate the idea of artwork and like cinema and going in like seeing that there's subtext and that someone put a lot of effort into making a piece of art to be observed. I was like 14, 15, 16. And that was the mid, early to mid nineties. And there was just this explosion of amazing independent cinema. And I'm starting as like a 12 year old, I'm seeing Reservoir Dogs. And as I'm graduating high school, I'm watching Boogie Nights and stuff. And I'm thinking Great, like, you. oh my God, I really appreciate this idea that people can have amazing creative feelings and 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 commit themselves to it and, and present me this. With the way the studios are working now, and now the agencies are getting into creating content, the UTAs, the WMEs, now they're like making their own projects. They're just gonna stack the deck with their own clients and then people. everything's packaged. And I feel like, the guy or gal who just has a great idea and a, and a belief in themselves is getting Skin is getting washed away, you know. So that that's what really bugs me about it. But I do, I honestly do believe like there's a. I'm, maybe I'm overly optimistic, but I have a real love affair with the city of Los Angeles. I know I, that's why I'm asking because I'm literally I'm on the fence. I go in a week or two to go look at Texas, and as I'm getting closer, I find myself just like. I do, you know, we wrote a list pros and cons, yeah. and as I'm going through the cons, it's starting to build up of yeah. leaving LA. It, it may, but my love affair is real, and I do see all the. Uh, I always say like New York, Chicago, Miami, they are like um, an amazing like Marvel comic book movie. You know what you're getting when you go in there, and it is amazing. You go and you sit. You go to New York City, and you're like, it's going to be a the Statue of Liberty, and I'm going to go see Central Park, and it's going to be over the top. Times Square is going to blow me away. And you land and you go there, and you're like, whoa, this is the center of existence. Yeah, so New York City is amazing. It's, it's South Beach. You're like, what the fuck? Look at all these beautiful people. L.A. is like a film noir. You kind of don't know. You you have this idea of what you're going to see, but then you sit down, and you're like, huh? was that it? You kinda, don't know. Kinda, yeah, kind of flat. But then upon further inspection, you see what goes on in the shadows. And you're like, oh, this city has so much to offer. It doesn't blow you away because you like you go down to like the Walk of Fame or something. You know, if you're a tourist, place is a you go to Walk of Fame, you're like, what the fuck? And then sucks. you go to Disneyland, you're like, okay, I guess it. But when you if you don't go to like the graffiti walls in Venice, if you don't go see like the low rider, you know, the low riders in, uh, on Whittier Boulevard, yes. these, like the the real, the vibrant blood of the city. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's better than anywhere in the whole world. The the, the culture, the, the 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 modern art, and the and the the street art, and the and the kind of like the underbelly of Los Angeles, is uh is beautiful. But it's very hard to see. It's not it's not something that is. It doesn't hit. No, you not everyone's going to tell you about it. But yeah. there, and there's there's so many different spots yeah. in California that are just fan fucking tastic, man. From Venice to Marina, Santa Monica, Malibu, the Palisades. It's too far uh, apart, though. Everything's too far apart in LA. That that sucks. That does suck. It's far apart when the world's back to normal and there's traffic. Yeah. Like right now, it's not bad. It's not that bad. Like yeah. right now, anywhere you want to go, it's like, you want to go downtown, it's 18 minutes. You want to go to the valley, it's 18 minutes. Everything's 18 minutes. Like, can you imagine if it's like this all the time? I, I, I do have that, uh, like a severe 
passion. I, I love, I'm Mexican. I love to drive. I love cars. Er, I, everything fits. I love the Dodgers. I love the Lakers. Everything you're, fits. You're the most LA guy now. I love In a good it. way, meaning like right. LA. Like not, not, but, not Hollywood LA. But I love a lot of places. And I've thought about it. Like I'd love to live in like Midland, Texas. I'd love to live in Nashville. I'd love to live in in uh, you know outside of just outside of Atlanta. I know. I'd love to live in in you know somewhere in the like I was you ever thinking been to about Cleveland. I I love Cleveland. Cleveland's I was I dope. was uh I was conceived in Cleveland. Oh yeah. My parents thought that that was where they were gonna live, and then like when my mom was pregnant with me, they he, my dad got Cleveland's dope. Washington D.C. I could live in D.C. D.C.'s D.C.'s great, but D.C. almost you deal with the same problem. My 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 closest buddy lives in D.C. He, he, he complains about the same kind of problem that you deal with with the entertainment industry in um, with politics? In, in LA is that the, the political system is it's it's not just something that's there it it bleeds into the fabric it's everything, of everything yeah. you do even if you're not in politics you know so I, I, I've thought of it but I I, I just I love I've, I've never really been to places in America and I'm I'm, I'm admittedly um, Pollyannish about this country I'm, I'm I'm openly like super pro America I love this country Me I too. love and maybe it's because I've had the chance to go to really shitty places. I don't think enough people who, and I'm not saying there's not tremendous flaws in how we do things in this country. I'm not saying that there aren't things that desperately need to be changed. No, but what I'll, I am I'll saying kick is like, in the dick if you talk shit if, about America. If you go to Saudi Arabia, if you've been there, if you go to fucking uh, parts of South America, you're like, oh, America's so awesome. All right, fight fans, this week. DraftKings is letting you bet on the big fight, the big fight, fight night this Saturday night. And then also, not only can you bet on Shabazian versus Brunson Saturday night, but also NBA is back, y'all. NBA is back. DraftKings has brought their expertise to legal sports betting. It's legitimate sportsbook based right here in the U.S. of A. So you can rest assured that your funds are totally secure. DraftKings, America's top-rated sportsbook app, is safe, secure, reliable. You can deposit, withdraw your money at your own convenience. You can, ooh, new users, sign up bonus, 1000 bucks. Say what? Shabazian is a minus 300 stuff. Listen, I like the over on rounds. I think it's two and a half and uh, for it to go the distance. But you never know. Shabazian is a complete monster. You could stop Brunson early on, but uh, the safest bet is it goes past two and a half. Uh, check the odds on that. Uh, head to the app right now. Check out all they have to offer, including player props, live betting, so much more. If Sportsbook is not available yet in your state, don't forget about the DraftKings Fantasy app for this weekend's golf tournament. Say what? They're offering a share of $1 million. Ha, 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 ha. Download the top-rated DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use your code five. When you sign up for limited time, all new users can sign up and get the bonus of $1,000. That's right. DraftKings Sportsbook has a sign-up bonus up to $1,000. Just enter the code FIGHTER when you sign up only at DraftKings Sportsbook. You must be 21 or older. Bet on UFC this weekend. Bet on NBA. Bet on Major League Baseball. They got it all at DraftKings. You must be 21 or older. New Jersey, Indiana, or Pennsylvania only. Bonus comprised of a first deposit bonus and first bet match, each up to $500. Deposit bonus requires 25 times playthrough. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Question mark. Call 1-800-GAMBLER or in Indiana, 1-8-0-0-9 with it. DraftKings, enter code FIGHTER. 4hams.com is all about men's wellness. Need help with your hair loss? Most of you do. Erectile dysfunction, yep, that's a problem. Wake them up. You have a cold, interested in mental health, or how about COVID-19 home tests? That's right. Him's got you covered. Didn't know that, right? You're like, COVID? What? Yep, him's got you co covered, man. 66% uh, of men start to lose their hair by 35, and you can only save what you have. Once it's all gone, it's too late. If you look like Jeff Bezos, hymns can't help you. Save it right now, man. Save it. Thanks to science, hair loss can be optional. Hymns connect you to FDA-approved products to treat hair loss, and they have thousands of happy customers loving their results. Time at home is the opportunity for self-care. Hymns will connect you to a licensed profession now. Uh, all you got to do is answer a few quick questions for free and to see if FDA-approved products to treat hair loss are right for you. If approved, the products show up to your door, discreet little package, all right? So you don't got to worry about hair loss anymore. Today, Hims is giving you their best offer yet. If you're not happy with your results, after 90 days, Hims will give you a full refund. You got nothing to lose, baldies. And right now, 
You guys can get your first visit absolutely free, free, free. Go to forhims.com slash F A T K. That's fat K. That's forhims.com slash fat K. Full refund of price paid available for the first 90 days. Supplies refund request must be made between 90 and 180 days after product shipment delivered. Prescription products require an online consul- consultation with a medical professional who will determine if the prescription is appropriate. Restrictions apply. See website for details and important safety information. I read an article uh, maybe six, seven years ago. I read an article in New York Times, and, and I was just like killing. I was, I'll never forget. I was at a Starbucks. This had to be longer because it was before I met my wife. I was waiting for this girl that I was meeting in Vegas. And I was at a Starbucks in one of the casinos waiting for her to meet me at this, like, this thing. And I'm sitting there, like, I'm like, all right, fucking flipping through the paper. I read all the, like, main stories. And then I do what I don't typically do. And I just start flipping through, like, the, the cutesy stories. And I read this story about a collection of Afghani women who are poets. And all that they do to be able to continue to have their little poetry club because what they're doing is, as women in Afghanistan oh, ground for murder. And these girls are like, yes, we feel like it's really worth risking our lives so that we can have the ability to write our poems and share them with each other. And I'm like, holy fuck. Yeah. People risk their lives to write. Here's the, here's the thing though. Those women, when you say murdered, you mean stupid. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's not like a shot. It's hey, not pretty. Oh, you're writing poems? Shot? No, no, no. We're going to dig six feet, and then we're going to stone you. To, people are going to come around and they stone you. That's and what then, they, they still stone people. There. And then have you ever, like, watched any... I've never watched a stoning, but I've watched, like, little clips Ugh. on, like, when they used to have, like, Al Jazeera American stuff. Yes. Uh, none of those guys can throw... It's like a, they've never it's played long literally. and painful, and I'm like, can we at least loan them like a retired Randy Johnson or can something? You get so Nolan can, Ryan in that, that motherfucker. Poor girl standing there tied up, and it's like four days later, and they're like, oh, no, 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 throwing like a bitch. Can we? Some are like skipping rocks. There's got to like, be guys in minor leagues that aren't going to make it to the majors that still have like a 98 mile, you know, and just heater. one good stone. And it's man. like they Dude, get them out of their misery, ship them over, you know. But uh, you're really you couldn't you and your wife couldn't especially with her work you couldn't really leave it like it's not an option like for me it's a bit of I'm not I'm not a Hollywood like I'm not I don't go on aud- I've gone on auditions but like you know I'm not auditioning for movies if the right offer came I you know is a shoe right. in but I'm not like hustling with the auditions or right. you know yeah stand up I-, I could do in Austin you know there's 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 three or four clubs i go to at night it's in the center so i could still tour everywhere yeah it would suck as far as podcasts because guests you'd have to fly in guests all the time which would be a nightmare there is look you're gonna miss out on something because not only is it like the guests and stuff like that but imagine not having like the store that that is a big deal like having a home club that good with com other comics that you really bond with it's that are that good too, like and it, it, everyone's raising yeah, their game it's just like uh, going away from an aca- a jiu-jitsu academy where there's a you know just hundreds of murderers yeah that, all black you belts. go you go somewhere where you're like one of the better people it change you're not going to be as good yeah, you know right. so there there's value in that but at the same time like my wife even though she is she's hollywood she likes being an actress she's from like kind of woodsy seattle area like and she doesn't i mean my wife likes fishing and hunting and like i mean she's she's not should be down she's not a very like traditional snowflakey hollywood girl she doesn't you know and i think that's honestly why we kind of clicked is that she um she doesn't like the idea i i I, with my first wife and this is by the way i want to make it very clear i'm not talking shit by any stretch of the imagination but um with my first wife like i there were times when i lost my cool and i would get really kind of macho and protective of my ex-wife and my ex-wife was like what are you doing like just take it like take it down a notch. take it down a notch. Yeah. and and, and was, was not mad at me but there was a, it was problematic i see my wife and she's even kind of opened up about it like um when I switch over, and I'm not a tough guy or anything, but like something instinctive kicks in where it's like, um, I remember a guy uh, tweeted to me, and plenty of people talk shit, and that's, that's part of the game. But it, he was saying something really derogatory about my wife. And uh, I, I lost my cool, and I went on this like lengthy Twitter you wrote a novel where, back. where I was like, I'm going to find you. Like I was turned into yeah. fucking Liam Neeson, and I was like, I yeah. have skills. I'm going to find you, and I'm going to fucking yeah. kick your ass. You know, like yeah. you don't. 
I don't want you to believe that you can get away. Like, talk yeah. shit about how I suck, you hate me, yeah, this radio fine. show sucks. Yeah. I, I, I don't, I, I don't want to live in a place where you think you can get away with that, because I will, I'm going to oh, fucking... He, it must, he must have said something bad. Something, it, yeah. It, yeah, it wasn't that bad. It wasn't like she's a, a fat pig and yeah. she should die. It was like more of... um A low blow. It was just like, yeah, she's getting old. You're not, you're not as yeah. hot as you used to be. Now you've got the crow's feet and all that. And I was like... Yeah. So you Fuck. think you can casually shit on my wife? You're you you're wrong. Yeah, I'm going. And my wife, my current wife, she's she's like, yeah, good, for, thank you, I appreciate it. Oh, she d- she dug yeah. it. And I think there's a there's a weird because her dad was a gnarly dude. He's passed now, but he escaped. He was a Czech uh, citizen that escaped communism in Czechoslovakia and then came to America and became a doctor. So he's not Jesus like he's Christ. not like this yuckety yuck soft no. th- he's a very tough. mathematical yeah. calculated angry tough dude Probably pretty cool. and um and i think that that was kind of that was what her model of manhood was yeah and i, and I think she that, likes a guy's guy she does she yeah. she digs it if like, you start crying she's like God damn her it. her um ideal hollywood dudes are never like the the goslings and the 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 you know paul walkers was it like, like jason that. momoa or some it's shit? it's uh <clears throat> Excuse me, <laughs> Brendan Schaub. <laughs> and I will repeat the story again. I'm not a guy's guy, man. I, I repeat the story again. I, I was talking to a casting director friend of ours who she said, I need a guy in his mid 30s who can actually handle himself because I, we we're doing it. And I go, I know the dude. Uh, my friend Schaub is a, literally a, was a heavyweight professional MMA fighter. In the UFC, it was creme de la creme, and now he's he's in the entertainment industry. And my wife from across the room goes, and I think he's sexy. <laughs> I'm like, Shut all up. right, look, he's a good-looking guy and all, but can we fucking tone <laughs> yeah, it down? He's all right. uh, but like, yeah, like and like like Benicio del Toro is like a, a oh, man. she likes that. She likes a guy. And Sicario, he's a bad yeah. Man. She goes, I feel we saw Sicario two in the theater a couple years ago, and we were leaving. She goes, you know what's so hot about him? She's like. I really believe he might have actually killed people in real life. Oh wow! And got away. And I was like, "She's all in." She's like, "Yeah." I was like, "You know what? You're right. I could easily like if I found out if you guys found out right now that breaking news, bodies buried in fucking Kevin Costner's house. You'd be like, "Holy sh- the guy from Waterworld!" Kevin, if you if you found it, it was like irrefutable evidence leads back to Benicio del Toro and two uh, murders. Yeah, you'd that be makes like, sense. "Okay, that makes sense." Yeah. All right. <laughs> That second one nowhere near as good as the first though, but he is a stud. The first movie's great. Oh, the, it's great. the music, yeah. man! It's the fucking music. He has a I, I, he has a movie where he played. He's uh, Pablo Escobar. Really? Yeah. Look How that come up. I don't Jim. know this. I don't. You know, I've gotten balls. What was it? Traffic? Wasn't he Pablo Escobar in Traffic? No. Was he? No. Paradise Lost. Yes. Oh. No, he doesn't look anything like Pablo, but that's the movie. He's a goddamn great actor. I have no idea. I, all I know is about this guy starts dating Pablo Escobar's like cousin or niece or some shit like that, and then Pablo hires him to work for him. I guess he looks a little bit like Pablo there. That's a good actor, man. Oh, he's fantastic. See, he's a riveting dude to watch. Have you seen Brawl? I'm trying to get... I'm like an evangelist for this movie. Have you seen Brawl in Cell Block 99? No. All right. How old is it? Far it's like two or three years. Far too many people haven't seen this movie. It oh, is uh, Vince Vaughn. Fucking awesome. At first glance, kind of like what I was talking about At with like glance, LA. It looks like At first glance, you're like, this is just a, it's mur- it's violence porn. It's it's like a looks like guys from Wedding Crasher raped a few chicks. He is. This it, it it's insanely violent, but it is so thoughtful and beautiful and and is well made especially in the day and age where every movie has to hit you over the head with exposition and sh- tell you everything over and over again and just has no respect for the audience right this movie has so much respect for the audience and it, it just provide like a slow drip of the of this character study of this guy but it is crazy violent like it, it is insane is it uh what's it on Cell Block 99. I think you, it was on Amazon for a while. I don't know if you could stream it, but it's got to be like 99 cents to rent because <laughs> it, it, made, it was made for like $10. But it's really... The guy who did Bone Tomahawk directed it, and, and that's another film. That I, I love think. Vince Vaughn, man. Yeah. It's good shit. Speaking about my wife, I got to run this by you. Oh, what do you got? Because she won't answer me in, in, like, in a complete way. So... It's like a couple years ago, I'm on the couch, 
and I'm sitting down to watch my wife make her appearance on Curb Your Enthusiasm, Oof. which was big deal. A big deal. I mean, I mean, it's gonna be one, one of the greatest, greatest comedies, of uh, you know, obviously of all time, and, and in the industry, it's super well respected. It's oh. like very rare that there's a show that audiences love and like people in Hollywood love it. You know, it's it's critically it's an all time great. Yeah, all time great. Anybody hate on? No, no. Who, how can you shit on that show? Never. Um. So my wife gets this gig on on Curb Your Enthusiasm. One 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 reoccurring role. No, just one, just one, one time, time, just one episode. But she's like a pivotal member of this of this episode like a pivotal part so i sit down to watch it and i'm so excited because i love my wife and i love when she works and i love curb your enthusiasm so we get in to the to the movie and we watch and i realize oh my wife is playing a hooker <laughs> okay and nothing wrong with that but then i start doing like her imdb in my brain and i'm like oh my god my wife has been a sex worker on the big and small screen five fucking times. You know what that means? You know what that I'm hearing? Your wife's smoking hot. Or that's what it is. There's a lot of hot girls. My wife is very attractive. But she's hot. But she talented. also might have a thing where people Ooh. collectively as a whole Think look at her and go, that's, a that's the whore I'm looking for. <laughs> she, she and might. I go, what is it about my wife that says that she has had so much penis? that and so like i have this weird thing this she's weird super you're, you know this your wife's smoking yes and she's my type like i like that she's she's my height oh, you're, she's you're, got you're a big type, old thick ass your type you mean hot my no but a lot of guys she's don't also my type you know hot's hot dude hot's hot but dudes have types i like i Jin, like Jin likes real skinny girls like yeah exactly. like right now he's like Ugh, taylor swift too thick <laughs> like he liked her when she was like 19 oh my God. See, you know like he likes yeah. some like Pumpkin Jack. Like Kate Upton, for instance. Everyone is like, Kate Upton's me. And she's, obviously, I can objectively see she's attractive. Just doesn't do it for me. You Kate know Upton? I mean? Yeah, she just doesn't, it's not my thing. You know, like the blonde, beach blonde with the big, big titties. Big titties. I need like, like a, like a kind of exotic looking brunette with a giant ass. I'm not mad at Kate Upton. I, you know, my type's hot, dude. Would I, would I cut off a finger to fuck her? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but you understand, like Isaac Gonzalez. I would Who's let that? you. I'd let you shit in my mouth Who's right that? now if I could fuck bring her up too. Isa Gonzalez. E I Z A. E I Z A. Oh, oh I remember her. She's hot. She's super hot. Mm -hmm. You ever see Baby Driver? Like she was the hot chicken baby. She was in, like that's. Oh my god! I've never seen her before. Or the you know the uh, what's her name? I think her name's Natalie. You could also shit. Natalie her. Emanuel. The 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 Khaleesi's mixed black oh, white dude the, her little assistant yeah i'd i'd let you guys collectively do a vomit session all over my naked no, body dude. to have sex oh with i would let the boys do a bukkake yeah. session on me for one the, one bukkake film to one, have sex with her for bukkake, a couple of times yeah her Done. her Done. i agree dude. Oh, we, Demolish. We, have, we have the same style that's what i'm saying you like, could do a bukkake on me the girl in uh <laughs> in uh you oh shay mitchell from Pretty Little Liars. Oh, yep. Oh my mm -hmm. God! What are we doing? What are we doing here? Film multiple bukkake sessions on. <laughs> Look at this woman. <laughs> it's insane, dude. And she's a mother of two, I think. I think one. Oh my God, <laughs> dude. I'm with you, dude. Bukkake all day. <laughs> you know that's a great thing, honestly. And I, I know this sounds. This is gonna sound dumb, but like, hear me out. I think that's one of the off big, <laughs> big, big upsides to Instagram because there's so many, we can all sit here and bemoan all the downsides to social media. Instagram has been really amazing because it's done something that nothing else could do in the history of modern Western humanity. And that is finally got the message through that guys don't like super skinny chicks. Agree. If you see the girls, all the girls on Instagram, Thicker. because look, the fashion industry and, and Hollywood for years was the, the 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 ideal look for women was dictated by women other women and gay guys and fashion directors and stuff and like that. And they would push it on you and everyone's like, what? No, and, dude. And that kind of I think really did bleed through I don't want to speak for women, but I think for a lot of young girls, they got that message it's like, oh, I have to be a size zero and and I need to be thinner. I need to be thinner. And, and then all the Instagram guys like, comes along and and it's like and you could have as many guys as you want tell you, no, we prefer a woman twenty pounds they're, overweight they're compared listening. to twenty pounds under. They don't get it. Instagram comes along and it's like, oh, these girls who have 38 inch hips and 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 giant ass and and you know nice meaty arms, they're getting meaty seven thousand, <laughs> they're getting seven hundred million followers, and the girls and a million who, dick pics, 
Uh, uh, for anyways, a reason. Yeah. And I get a, you get a lot of dick pics? <laughs> you seem like you'd be big in the gay community. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Not a ton. You know what? You know what? I, 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 it's, I've been like this for about six months. I don't really. I'll post I'm out. Yeah. I post I'm out. I don't want people's opinions because you're swaying my opinions. I don't want. I post I'm out. I don't I, see. Um, when, I, when I tell you this, I see no comments. I see nothing. I post It's I'm probably out. the healthiest way to be. But I well, like think the, the, my, my logic with that is think of anybody you ever admired growing up, right? Anybody, none of them had the influence of all these fans or haters changing their creative dreams or creative, whatever they wanted to do. They didn't have all this input. I got one the other day. Like I don't typically pick where I was like, I actually like wrote the guy back. I was like, that's, <laughs> it's really, that's really impressive. Like that's really something. Dude. Kat showed me one the other day. <laughs> I don't know what the guy thinks she was going to do with it. Dude, is he fucking a couch? So I got a DM where a guy took a flashlight, he shoved it between two couch cushions, and he fucked the flashlight. But he's butt, but he's is, like, do you have a t shirt on? He had a t shirt on and, and no, then pants. no pants. Oh, wait, so like Tony Soprano, he kept his shirt yeah. on when he did yeah. the yeah. fucking But he's just, yes. he's like looking at the camera, he's like this, and he's just <laughs> fucking his flashlight. I'm like, what are you going to do with that? Now, this guy, I would also DM him back. That is a giant hog. <laughs> <laughs> that is a that's a tomahawk yeah if you had a steakhouse you'd order the tomahawk <laughs> this thing is long and thick yes and black i told and him he's a good looking dude a handsome man great great physique now is he trying to fuck yeah oh and, and he, <laughs> oh, but, but he was he was real cool about it he was real cool because <laughs> most gay guys now he's now he's definitely not a bottom no and no, that, that, that was my problem that's what i wrote back to him I said, sir, <laughs> first off, this is an impossible cut. <laughs> first off, incredible <clears throat> penis, incredible, incredible dick. Good body. You're good physique. looking. If I, if I, I was am, gay, I'm I it. said, I'm so flattered that you find me attractive, but I got to be honest, I'm not a gay man and I haven't ever uh, uh, experimented. My mind, yeah. And if I'm going to take my first dive into <laughs> anal sex with a penis, it's yours not is not going to be my choice because that would. For the viewers, I'm talking here to there. Yeah. <laughs> and, and he's not all the way hard either. That thing's just, he's, and he's in uh, compression shorts, white, and he's wet. So you can see this, this panther tail yeah. just down to his knee. I mean, it is a. What a burden. I it is an impressive <laughs> cockatiel. You have to be gay with that cock because. There's no, there's no woman that's pumped. I've seen some on black.com where they're, yeah, no, 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 some no. of those dicks. They're getting are, a paycheck. <laughs> I've talked to some of those ladies. I've, I, I, I have, I've had conversations. The ladies don't like it. Yeah, there's a size of cock where it's like, this is not enjoyable. I mean, this is what well, I'm in oh, so, this is severe pain. Sometimes I'm not even into it. I'm just like, how's it going to fit? Yeah. Sometimes I just watch like, how, how are we going to do this? Yeah. Just fundamentally how's this gonna fit anywhere <laughs> and then you and it's like, like this what poor, else is inside this poor guy and how does how does she it's impossible yeah i like 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 tommy lee would be like the biggest i'm going like i would like a tommy back lee. in the day and the only way we found out tommy or stevie lee. blue eyes had a nice full thick cock <laughs> that's a cock i would his like is pretty you know, you know he's you know nicole aniston that's this uh, i'm saying that's, in a, the business that's, a, that's a big that gets you somewhere that there's some benefit to it. There's a big where it's like, what do we? It's like it's like the difference between like like looking like uh, Hugh Jackman with buffness and then being on the, an IFBB pro where you're like, well, that what do we what do we do yeah, here? You it's can't unhealthy. you gas out going up steps? Yes, too much. You know, like I understand wanting to be a little more jacked. There's a cock where it's like a pro bodybuilder. Yes, yeah, you have pro bodybuilder. Yes, yeah, Stevie's is it's nice. It's nice. <laughs> it's nice. <laughs> when did you see it? Oh, he showed you that when you were here. Fucker, he did. <laughs> <laughs> and you and you and Cal are like, yeah, you should see the guy because I was we like, gotta see it. You work in porn, that's fantastic. And he goes, yes, I work with my lady Nicole Anderson. And of course, now I'm like, the that's porn. Your, star. That's your girl. And I'm like, what? Well done. So you're talking about his member, and then I'm thinking, I gotta see. It. So I say, I I have to see this sometime. And next thing I know, he fucking has an image on his phone, just like right here. I'm a oh. porn star, dude. It's all yeah. He sent me. He goes, dude. What my first video? What do you think? And I was, I was like, video. Was he? Because he sent me a video of him playing the guitar. Because I want to learn the guitar. So he sent me a video of him playing like the guitar in a bunny suit. I'm like, whatever. He was my first video. What do you think? I click in it. You know, it's him and his girl. I'm like, well, dude. Yes. I don't know. I mean, it looks good. <laughs> I, I have no problem. I mean, I've, 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 I've no critiques. I have no problem 
watching my friends have sex but because i've i've had i've done it i've been uh fortunate or unfortunate enough to have sex in the same room i've i've had uh multiple partner sex with friends of mine but i don't want to like it's not like i'm not you know and i have like these buddies that'll be like uh hey want to see a video of me fucking so and so and i'm like no no i, I not don't if it's your girl you know what i'm saying like right. dude not if i mean it's your girl i don't want to see it dude if you're just if you're singularly doing a thing yeah, i'll check it out <laughs> But like Stevie's girl, he brought her to him one of my shows and Brea, and I'm like, dude, she have you ever seen her? Yeah. <clears throat> Jesus Christ. I'm like and she's in Spandex. I'm like, dude. Porn stars can are you too, go stand by my merch. Porn Bring stars her are too stand by my merch. Porn stars are too attractive right now. And I I mean that in like I like it, but I'm concerned like how the fragile eggshell fourteen year old boy mind can handle really attractive girls doing all the nastiest shit possible. Because this girl's impossibly hot. And in person you're like, what the fuck? Because is that like look them? You know how hard it was for you and I to even see a naked girl when we were 12, 13, 14? Oh, Mission Impossible? Right. And when you did, it was really worth it. And you're like, that's it. If it you saw off. porn, it was like you you had a friend doing Lookout because a parent might come home and all that. Like, you watch Spice Channel with like fuzz on it and shit. Now you're 12, 13 years old. You you don't understand sexuality at all and everything. And you can just click on a Bukaki the video. hottest girls doing you double lane. Bukaki lane-o. video. Yeah, you German, I don't know the how. German goo girls. Are you shitting me? German goo girls. <laughs> German goo girls. And then there's this whole like prolapse movement, which I'm not a fan of. Prolapse, but I'm, what but do you I'm mean? fascinated. Prolapse. By. What do you mean? What do I mean? Prolapse. <clears throat> I don't know if you can Google this, Jen. I'm afraid uh, you can't. Maybe put I it. heard the German goo Here, let girls. Me just, let me just what are you even do it. Give man? you a little example of prolapse. Uh, this is um, this is a Blah. vaginal prolapse. That's where I'm out, dude. This is a vaginal, anal, and cervix prolapse. You gotta be super disturbed. This is a men's that. anal prolapse. What's a prolapse? It's like, it's, it's based. It's like they're 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 pulling. Oh, I know. What you're it's talking inside about. out ass. I know what you're talking it's about. Inside. Oh, okay. Have you ever here's seen a girl. Have you ever seen here's a girl put it, eating cereal out of another girl's <laughs> oh. asshole. That's where I'm out, dude. See, that's <laughs> a, mm, are, are those Fruit Loops? <laughs> yep. You know, there's, there's. I like how he had. To, he was offended by the. <laughs> might, the I mean, if Lucky curious. Charms, I'd be more into. It. But the thing is, is uh, yeah, for you, for you that don't know what prolapse is, if you've ever seen that Rick and Morty episode where uh, Summer accidentally hits that machine and she becomes a giant, and then she hits it again, and it turns all of her insides outsides, and then the mom does it. It's that. <laughs> it's that. It's that but butthole. Yeah, but just butthole. It's disgusting. But there's like a movement now. Like I've I don't think there's a movement. There Mike. is. Nope. <laughs> I think in your small community there might be a movement. But I, I'm here to tell you, there's no movement, man. Can I show? I'm, I'm sure it's a fringe community. But can I show you after the show? Can I show you girls who are like, yeah, lick my fucking prolapse, and girl, other girls getting in and like, oh, they're getting paid though. Dude. And I'm, either way, dude, can you? Imagine? They could get paid to have sex, like have a penis go in one of their holes. No, they're doing for shock value. Like, can you imagine if you're single hooking up with a girl? She was like, lick my prolapse. I'm like, are you at your goddamn mind? I wouldn't want to, but there's girls I, that are I would hot call enough the cops. There's girls like, that are hot enough that I'm like, I'm, Oh, you're not. I got to call the cops. You're obviously Where do you draw the line? Okay, let's say it's the it's the hottest girl you can imagine. Like, it's that girl from Game of Thrones. Oh. Where do you draw the line? Where is it where you're like, I'm, it's not worth it? Well, you got to give me some scenarios, dude, because I'm willing to go pretty far. Is it a one-time thing? Is there a future? Is she like, yeah, I'm going to hang around for a long for time? Me, it's, it, for me, it's violence. Where you, like you went choker, choking. I don't consider that violent. Like like choking where she's in control. Yeah, and I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. fun. Like you have a code word. I'm talking about like I used to. I used to know this young lady, and she wanted me to do like combos, <laughs> and I was like, yeah. I can't do. I told. I was like, I can't do this. And I would she. I she'd be like pull my hair, pull my hair. I'm like, okay, that's that's great. And, be, and then next thing I know, she's like harder, harder. And I, I I one time I had like a handful of her fucking hair, you. and I was like, this is I can't. I don't like this. I don't know what else to tell you. It's yeah, it not- used to be a problem when I was fighting the UFC on a single. Girls would think like, "Oh, UFC cage fight," and they'd want it real rough. They'd be like, "Hit me harder." I'm like, "Yeah." I'm, t- I'm telling you, I hit you any harder. There's gonna be you're, there's gonna be real issues here, man. It's a serious. Yes, problem. me. I'm gonna be fucked. Like you're. <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't know, dude. It's tough. It's tough. <laughs> that, I think I think that's my like. It's like everyone's always like, everyone's like, but, but shit, what if she? If, but what if shit she shit every time? I'm fine. Oh, I'm out. I'm like, I'm not. I don't prefer that, but I'm. That's if if Natalie Emanuel walks in here right now, she goes, I'm going to shit in your mouth. Come out to the bathroom, mate, and you can have a, give me a toss. I'll be like, all right, that's great. She goes, 
I just have to warn you, every time I get penetrated, I shit all over the place. I'd be like, all right, well. Really? Get some fucking oh, I'd galoshes. Be I'd be like, ah, oh, that's a bummer. It is a bummer, but I'm not. St- I'm not <laughs> no. stopping. It is a bummer. Oh, wow. I'm not stopping. Oh wow! No, I definitely stop. I'm such a <laughs> visual creature. I'm out, dude. That's why I don't understand the like some. Obviously, but to a, your po- to your point, that's with kids getting into porn. Yeah, like if your son is on porn, and he's 14, brings up for whatever reason, prolapse is in the top videos of the week. Yeah, and he clicks on that, he's gonna think. That's normal standard procedure. Where he clicks on goo German girls, he's gonna think. Next thing you know, you guys gotta have oh. you gotta have the goo German girls on on the show. <laughs> it's it's a, a problem, man. Ah, yes, you like ah, it. I'll do it. Um, it's a problem. He here, yeah, it's a problem. I wonder. I wonder, dude, I, because I definitely like. Uh, I was so obsessive about having sex with girls that i allowed it to completely change my behavior to completely change my entire personality says every guy yes really? yes but but like i was lucky i i mean i i really spent a considerable amount of my youth engaging in dangerous reckless behavior that i didn't necessarily want to yeah to engage in but looking back on it i really don't i'm very lucky i'm very fortunate and i don't take it for granted i don't have a lot of regrets um i i never really like burn bridges with with buddies and stuff i told lies and i you know i i stole some cash every once in a while from my parents and stuff i did bad things i feel bad for but but i i reasoned with them and i made amends with these people i have deep regrets about how i treated girls when you and i never i never how put my hands on them and yelled them just even even into sobriety even into like my single days after after my divorce i, I you know just 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 really leading them on into thinking that there was much bigger More. future for us and all just because, like, I... Just trying to get laid. Yeah. And just staying out later and going and and talking up girls and and doing things and being that guy. I was being that guy. And I'm not saying there's anything inherently wrong with having sex with a lot of different girls. I think kids call there's that... There's just a way you do it where you're either... You're a dick. You're a you, fuckboy. Yeah. You're a fuckboy. And I and I don't want to be that guy. You don't want to be now, a fuckboy. Now, I... I am also the hor- the horniest, grossest guy that I, I am obsessive about hot chicks. The girls that I find attractive, I, it, it rules, it, it completely clouds my judgment. I can't sit through yoga because I have to leave and beat off. I can't do it. <laughs> I have to. I, oh, wow. I cannot. If there's a hottie in the class, it's so Which in this neck of the woods, it's impossible. It's there, mission impossible. You can't go without there being one girl who's got Lululemon labia fucking billboard right in front of your face. And you're like, well. Dude, I, I used to do yoga in uh, Santa Monica when I first moved here in the the instructor was a friend of mine and she had she was this white girl with an impossible ass yeah and she'd wear the tightest spandex and it's like i i can't keep like coming what here. are we you know i'll uh, walk into keep... i'll walk into yoga classes i'll be like what are we doing and like the guy or gal that i go with that that has inevitably invited me i go like i can't i can't do this dude. and then no, i was doing yoga there's the gay instructor this dude and for whatever reason just had it out for me i was doing it just to loosen up and feel better and i was committed and i paid for three months uh, up front because i i knew if i paid i'd go and i was going hot yoga it was 90 minutes i was doing it three times a week committed to it and then the guy was just a dick like you know i don't know i'm not familiar with yoga and they'd say a pose and everyone in there has been coming for years they know exactly what to do so i would look around and they're you know it's yoga in santa monica so the girls are impossibly hot yeah. and it's just numbers it's a numbers game dude so when they would say a move i would look and you go eyes up front brendan in front of everyone i'm like dude i'm not checking them out you fucking idiot i don't know all the moves was he man bun guy yes i knew it you know why he hates the idea of you yeah he doesn't hate you he doesn't even know you no but that guy got someone in the ballpark of shab put their foot up that guy's ass a lot or or he lost his girl and and he had a crush on some fucking cutie jane and you came through alpha man came through like oh can you believe that two thousand fucking yards my senior year and she's like (laughs) and you just took her back to your irock z and knocked it out of the park (laughs) and he's sitting there going like what the what am i gonna do with my patchouli and fucking satan yeah i I stopped going man yeah i was like that's a big problem with yoga because i i really i really front and everyone like god I really believe in yoga for for the um the benefits. I, I, I think, think it's are, overrated. I think there are a lot of them. I do. I, I I think it's a little overrated. Well, okay, overrated for what? 
Because here's my I, big I, thing. I think it's good for peace of mind. I think like the hot yoga and doing it all the time, you got to relax a little bit. I think it's incredibly good as an adjunct to other things. What I, I have a problem it's with a good yoga supplement. is that there are too many people, especially young girls, who think that they're going to do yoga all the time and then have, you know, fill in the blank chick's body, you know, you know no. Jessica Biel. Or no, they look like Kate, Gumby. They you know, turn to Gumby. Yeah, and, and that's just not the case. I do think, though, that it is incredibly good for um, body, body control is something that, especially Agreed. if you get very good at lifting weights yeah. and, and, and get some level of hypertrophy, yeah. that um, you can get lost, your, your, your movements can become dysfunctional. And I do think that that, you, but the problem with yoga is that it's not, it's not an end all be all. It's, it's now not people do it three, four times a week, the hot yoga for 90 minutes, like go lift the fucking weight, dude. The guys who, you know, like mentally it's good. I think once a week it cleanses your soul, you get your mind right. But it's like, if you're trying to get in shape, that ain't it. Yeah, it's not, it's way. not a great way to go. And I, I like, I always tell people on Mikey likes you, the greatest health and fitness podcast. <laughs> I was like, you gotta be, be specific and be realistic with your goals. What I mean by be specific is if you want to put on 25 pounds of muscle, yoga ain't doing. Don't go to yoga and then do some push-ups every other day. Mm -hmm. If you want if muscle gain is your goal, size and mass, you have to get under heavy weights. You have to also supplement that with high volume and lower reps with with or excuse me, higher reps with lower weight. You there there is a there you have to train for your specificity. If you want to be better at Muay Thai, do not do the same thing I just told the guy who wants to gain 20 pounds of muscle. Correct. You know what I'm saying? If you want to get quicker, uh, faster uh, rotational punches, you don't need to be spending all that time with a three rep deadlift. Be specific with what you want. If you want to loosen up and you want to get more mobility throughout your thoracic as a guy and a lot of women, you want to get more uh, mobility through the hips, yoga is fantastic. But sure. don't don't look at it as your way to be looking like Brad Pitt in Fight Club no, because that's not any shit ain't happening. You know? On your podcast, you have uh, guest or is it just you? I do yeah I mean not always but I, I typically do and uh, I try to look there's a million podcasts where especially buff, about health uh, but about health and fitness where buff guys and gals talk about reps and sets and eating and what they don't talk about is the steroids are. and they don't talk about that I wanted to have a, like a wellness podcast that was uh, so I what I what I dreamed of doing was making it a podcast for the guy or gal who's not really into exercising but wants to and can still get something out of that, but yet a professional like Mike Safe could listen to it and still be like, "That's a really good podcast. I'm interested." Oh, I'm interesting. Interested. You know, so, he knows his shit. Exactly. Someone who's a, he's he's one he's of the expert. greatest natural bodybuilders on the planet. Yes, and understands human performance and a great guy. And I want it. And I've had him on the show. Oh, really? And I wanted to make a show that that understand like there is this linear thing, this this continuum that you can jump on. That's all about getting better, and it's not just for the guy who or gal who's a beginner and it's not just for the world class there's a fucking there's a there's a team you can jump on and i want to invite you in where you get up in the morning and you say like i am going to commit to making myself better because i do not have good genetics i do not have really anything special to speak of you're pretty shred city life. dude but, pretty but good what genetics. i will say is like i the, i have this Discipline. is that i spend a serious amount of my time waking up in the morning and being really unhappy with who i am and I've done a lot of things to try to change that. And a lot of them weren't successful. And a lot of them really, really uh, were. When you say unhappy, physically? Physically, emotionally, mentally, where I stood professionally, where I stood in the eyes of my family, where I stood in the eyes of my friends, where I stood in the eyes of people that I wanted to impress. That's a lot, I, dude. I just... I, so, I, but physically, you were unhappy with what? Were you like... Because you were never fat. I was never like a, a fat, but I was always... I always perceived myself to be average. And then when I was drinking and using, those feelings would go away because I would just devote myself to being in this kind of altered state. Were you shredded when you were using? No, I was just, I was just normal. Gotcha. I was just, I, I, there, I wasn't by any means, if I took my shirt off, you wouldn't, there wouldn't be any negative comments, but there certainly wouldn't be any like, whoa, be like, oh, look God, at that Is that guy. Brad Pitt? Yeah. yeah. Um, I feel like if I did Coke or meth, I'd get pretty shredded. There is a thing like, People who have like like Kamaro Usman or would be shredded, like if you have, if you're genetically oh, okay. if you're genetically that guy like I definitely I'm not gonna be I shredded. had a buddy who was a surf punk and he ate nothing but Taco Bell and drank nothing but alcohol and he was a tweaker and he was fuck he just had like he looked like David Beckham he was yeah. just like shredded That's I'm like, my buddy Clark he he eats whatever the fuck he wants he's jacked everyone thinks he's on steroids he's never touched he doesn't even take protein powder he's just jack city that's and and genetic look here's another thing. I feel like I have to go extreme. 
like you have to eat just apples for two years to get straight. <laughs> That's where I'm at. You, I have to eat I just celery for seventy days. You're, you're a you're a bigger version of me. That's really well. You and I are very similar. You're shred. I, I don't think no, no, shreds no, 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 in no. my DNA. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it, yeah, it is. Hilarious. It is. It's just. It's not next month, and it's not. <laughs> it might be in two years, but it is. Yeah. Because I'm the same way. I um when I was in high school, all the other guys that wanted to get good at football and were on the football team, we all started lifting weights when we were like 16, 17. Some of us more passionately than others. I always could like make serious considerable gains in my squat and my deadlift and lift heavy weights and put on some muscle and like I got big broad shoulders. Um, but if I stopped working out and just being no eating normally, the same thing, I started yep. to get soft and fat. I'm yep. not like, whereas I have friends that like will train though and they'll get injured and then they don't train for a while and they come back, they lose yeah. 20, 30 and I they know. get thinner. I and know. Like, I'm not that guy. Me neither. But shred has come to me. It's just take, it just takes five years of like real effort. But you're know? on or, it. Or, you're measuring your food and or drugs. shit. One of the, you know, or, or both. Both probably be the way to go. And and here here's another thing. Guys and girls out there, I'm telling you this, not to fucking sell anybody out, not to be a dick, snitch at bitch ass snitch. <laughs> I'm saying this to make you feel a little bit better and to get some understanding. Talking about those girls and gals on All Instagram. All the people you see in the movies. Oh yeah. On the action based television show, even those girls, yes. There is a huge, huge, huge percentage of them that are using drugs. Now, are they are they walking on a professional bodybuilding stage? Are they using seven, two thousand milligrams of test and a bunch of fucking you know D ball and deca and shit? No, no, no. But trust me, fill in the blank action star guy who stars in the any of the fashion the schmirious and fucking few, Expendables. <laughs> they're doing those a few guys cycles doing, of Anavar. There's some G, there's a lot there's of a GH, a lot of Anavar, a lot of GH and a lot of test going around Hollywood and that includes the ladies that have to get in shape for that 100%. big amazing fucking. So, I and the only and also on I Instagram, that, those girls like my girl like how did she get this spot? I'm like a lot of that is her diet and there's some Anavar involved. I that being guarantee said, you. That being said, and our, our friend our mutual friend Mike Safi is a good example. I also get really upset when whenever you see someone who has an amazing physique, you automatically say that guy or gal is on drugs because let me tell that's you, not fair. there is a, a real blood drug tested bodybuilding and physique uh, corporation. They blood test your ass and if you fail, they put you on blast on the internet. Oh, tight move. The, the, Mike Safi is a blood tested natural guy yeah. and he is as shredded and as jacked as any human can ever be. You got, he's at forty one years old. At forty one years. Yeah. So uh, all I'm saying is that. But but he's the. Uh, it, it's fair to say though he'd be the exception. Yes, and and uh, as you get older, it's harder. As you get older, it's harder. And I, I, I here's my thing though. I don't get why everyone's so so quiet about it. Who gives a shit? If my agent called me up right now, Todd Feldman was like, "Hey, dude, they want you to be in the next Batman, but you got to put on forty pounds of straight muscle." Yeah. I would call my buddies who know how to get roids and yeah. like, dude, send me everything. I'd have needles in my ass less than an hour and later. I wouldn't care if it was Entertainment Tonight or goddamn Alex Jones. If they go, oh, you're using drugs here. They're getting that, that kind of condition. I'd be like, yeah, I used uh, about 1,000 milligrams a week of test. I was doing a 2.2 2 shot you know, of I, GH every I night. I think it would help people if they knew that those, those people that they look up to were actually on certain stuff yeah. and that they weren't born like that. And it's, granted, it's, a, it's still this what they don't understand. You can take all that shit and it's not going to be, there's still a ton of work that goes into it. Kamal Nunjani, all I got to say. I don't give a fuck if he used more steroids than Dorian Yates in his prime. He did. What he did took so much discipline and so much fucking hard work. I literally don't care, nor should you. It doesn't matter. I don't care if he was a walking pin cushion for six months. To make that, he, it's not, this isn't Josh Brolin getting ready to be fucking uh, oh, no. Thanos. He was his body like was shit. goo. His body was chewed gum, and he made it into a m amazing physique, and yes. he should be fucking really applauded for. It. Yep, he shut the fuck up on his Twitter, but yes, he got shred city, shred city. No, he looks fantastic. Let's go to some current events. Sounds good. Yeah, I, th I think it'd be better if like The Rock and these guys came out, like Will Smith for Ali. The Rock, like, oh, what'd you do if Rock was like? 
you know, when Rock's like, oh, you know, took a jet here and, you know, I'm getting ready for uh, pain and gain. It's yeah. like, and what'd you do for pain and gain? Oh, I took deck of D ball 700. You know, it'd be like, oh, that. Well, cool, here's dude. the thing about The Rock. Like, or like the rock, Arnold. The Rock is mid 40s. Is that right? Yeah, for like sure. Okay. Uh -huh. um, genetically gifted. The start. guy is obviously very genetically gifted. His dad it was Rocky Maivia and he was jacked. And, and if you've ever seen. Um, uh, genetics plays a big role. I'll give you this little story the before we get to, to, uh, to um, current events. Uh, you, a lot of people now, even if they didn't know who Ronnie Coleman was, they know him now because of his recent appearance on the JRE. He's widely considered one of the greatest bodybuilders of all time. Um, and he is so, was so jacked. Lightweight, baby. He's the best. He's, uh, Ronnie's the best. I have a personal story about him too, by the way. So anyway, there's a there's a training video that he came out with when he was at his peak. It was like 2000 or something. Where and he goes back home to his his family of origin, and um, his mom's cooking him his grits and his chicken. And he, I like to eat 12 ounce chicken. And then I my second meal gonna be some grits. And he's got you know he's got that Louisiana thick accent and and his mom's cooking for him. And he's like, Mama, show them that double bicep. And he this is a woman who's never even seen a gym. Yeah. Okay. And she's got like a sleeve thing, and she just goes like that. She has my arms. Yeah. And that, so I'm saying like How genetics. How much steroids do you think she's on? None. This, oh, is, a, this oh. is an old Southern woman who's never like. Oh, and shit. And look at her. Like, look at those guns. That's a woman. She's never. Ronnie says she's never, literally never looked at a gymnasium. I'd like to see her tested. But she's just I like sitting behind the, the counter just like, you know, making no, she's her. She's jacked and I have questions, but no, she's jacked. And uh, so just genetics. Genetics is a fucking big she's, deal. She's okay. <laughs> All right. So real quick. Okay. One time. This is probably 2003, 2004. He was still. If he wasn't Mr. Olympia, he was going back and forth with Jay at the time. Um, and uh, he was coming out to Pasadena, California to pose, to do a, a a guest posing spot. Okay, And I was living there at the time and was a personal trainer at Gold's Gym in Pasadena. It was, yeah. it was the very beginning of my radio career. This is what I did to actually make money because I was I'm making dirt in radio. Um, so I was a personal trainer there. And the manager of the, of the gym goes, dude, go in the airport, pick up Ronnie Coleman. Shut the fuck up. Ronnie Coleman. And he goes, yeah, yeah, I'm going to go pick up Ronnie right now. He's doing a guest posing thing in Pasadena. He's going to train here, and he's going to – he's got a hotel. I go, fuck yeah. So that was on a Friday. Saturday morning, I go back to work out, and Ronnie Coleman's there. And he's got a, like a weight caddy. He's and he's fucking life. just like blowing up. Like, yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. And it's awesome, right? But it was like Saturday, like 11 a.m., so there wasn't that many people there. And I'm just walking around Ronnie, and um, we both walk over to the incline – bench you know to for to do dumbbells and i'm going to put it up and he's like walking to it at the same time as i am and i was like oh dude were you gonna use it he's all right man you can use it. I, I need a break i need a break and he's sitting there he's sweating balls and he's yeah. fucking wipes his friend hands on the towel so i was like i'm only gonna do like two sets or something he's like okay man no problem man he sits in he was a very nice guy so i do like a warm-up set and then i grab the 85s and i do overhead shoulder press now yeah that's pretty good weight right not you bad. know I'm, I'm not trying to but not world class but i was like you know i'm, I'm a strong guy yeah and i was like i'm all done and i go to put him in. he's like you can leave him there man and i'm like okay no problem and ronnie coleman casually walks over to them picks them up with the at the slight incline like i left it and starts fucking curling them <laughs> oh my god and I've never 85s? felt like I've never felt like more like of it. this. Yeah, I mean, he was struggling, but he was still like, "Yeah, buddy, <laughs> yeah, buddy, you yeah, Jesus I'm like, Christ! I just, I just fucking chilled. You ever seen his video where he's doing like uh, the squats and yeah. the leg press? It's insane. But that, what to him, you know, hats off to him. But you know, they said nobody trained like him. No one lift like heavy, heavy weight like him. But now, you know, he's, he can't walk. His leader. hips are fucked yeah. up. Yeah, it's a bummer, man. Tim, though, no, totally worth it. Totally Is weird. that what he says? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No one really talks about Jay Cutler, though. They were both, like, neck and neck, right? He took it from Jay and, like... He, he wasn't... He's just a really nice guy. Like, Ronnie had that met Jay? thing. Yeah, yeah. I met him. Fucking monster. He's still huge. And amazing, amazing talent and everything. But, like, Ronnie was Ronnie. Like, Ronnie had that thing where he was like... Yeah, but I, and he trained in this dungeon in Texas. It was like a yeah. five thousand degree. He was a cop. All this fucking equipment's all shitty. He was a you cop know? though. Yeah, pulling Jay, people over for steroids. Jay's all like perfect hair, like training in the, like yeah. the Globo gym. So I think there was less like less appeal, you know. Yeah, my boys feel Heath. He, he, you know, he didn't compete this year. Still, one of Monster. the best in the world. One of the yeah. best in the world for sure. All right, what do you got, Jim? All right. Okay, so the other day on his podcast, Joe Rogan said something that he usually says, which is 
he thinks that video games are a waste of time and that it doesn't add to any personal development. The biggest video gamer in the world, Ninja, came out and he basically said that there are a lot of more job opportunities in gaming than Joe Rogan would think. It's not a waste of time. And a lot of gamers found that got really mad at Offensive. Joe. Offensive. Here's the thing. with what The reason Joe says that, I don't think Joe realizes... You know, Joe, Joe's 52 years old, man. He's not in the gaming world, but, you know, video gaming, you know, guy, kids can do it as a legit career now. You're talking about there's teams. These guys live in houses, uh, NBA 2K, Madden. Like, there's a the gaming world so big now. People can't make money. But to Joe's point, you know, I don't think everybody's making music. You know, I mean, how many people play video games? More than anybody playing sports or right. doing comp. There's so many more video games. So your chance of, I think his point is, your chance of making money doing that are very small. The other thing why Joe says video games are issue because Joe was addicted to the game. I think Diablo Quake, or Diablo. Or Di or Quake, yeah, well, maybe it was Quake. But he was yeah. straight addicted to it. Where yeah. he's playing, you know, when Joe gets when it's archery or where the fuck it is, he becomes addicted to it. So for him, no, he's I like, remember I'm wasting time, man. Dude, Joe used to have to do radio because now with the JRE he doesn't have to. But back in the day, you know, Joe used to come into Kevin and Bean quite frequently. And I remember one time, this is you know, 15 years ago, he came in and uh, he was like telling us off the air I, I would never tell stories out of school but he was like dude i'm i didn't get any sleep last night i was up playing whatever game he's like i had like 25 fucking diet mountain dews and yep. i i just lost i just played straight through the night you, you know? again but joseph what are you is 51 52 years old he doesn't to him like it's you, when i was a kid no one's making money playing yeah. video games for him he's like dude it can be a complete waste of time like you can go professional in it yeah. but if your goal is to become a comic a podcaster to your point you get an actress you got to do that uh, muay thai jiu-jitsu you got to do that well, here's the thing not waste 10 hours of, and you got to to be a professional gamer you got to spend 10 hours that's that's the the real problem i think and i and i totally agree with joe on this one even though i like gaming and i think i encourage people to do it if that's what brings them joy there the is a career is, path to it though. the problem is is that with something like any form of exercise or something like if you're really into uh, playing the guitar you may never become Ingve malmstein but if you spend your free time playing the guitar there's a myriad of latent benefits if you you i'll never be andre galvao but if i spend an hour and a half a couple times a week doing jujitsu it's going to benefit my life build relationships in many ways social building people, yeah uh, um uh, pushing past self-imposed yes. limitations understanding uh, uncomfortable situations there's a goal line. if you don't make it a career spending considerable amount of times uh, uh, playing video games, it's not really going to add much, and it w it can definitely take away. You know? 100%. So that that's where I think he. My, my thing too is like if you're spending fucking ten to twelve hours playing video games. When I was a, a young man, I was trying to meet girls. Yeah. I was trying to get in shape. It's just it's a dangerous road. Hey, also, Joe is fifty one or fifty, however he is fifty two. He's fifty years old. Let's just say he's fifty plus. Joe's fifty two years old. He doesn't know fucking video games. Yeah. He doesn't realize how many people are making careers and millions and millions are playing video games and they're selling out arenas. But I did. But hear to his it. point, how many people in this entire world are playing video games? Now think of your chance of making it professional in video right. games. You have a better chance doing it, probably make it to the NBA than you do making millions playing video games. Learn to code. Just odds. Hope I don't get canceled. <laughs> um, uh, honestly, though, like I heard from a reliable source that you can get pussy playing video games now. Of like the, See there, the there he goes. He this guy goes. I just, he, here, this who is this? Who is this? This is guy? Ninja. Right? Oh, Ninja's great. Here you go. I'm thank, a Ninja. Thank, ninja goes. I just want to add. Joe Rogan is a gamer. He is. He goes hands down. The dude loves him and is pretty well informed on the competitive side aspect of it. I just believe there's a huge gap of the last five years where the gaming has catapulted into a different uh, era and would love to explain. He's right, and Joe should definitely have Ninja on. Yeah. Ninja's the biggest gamer, but he's right. Like uh, the past five years. It's gotten so fucking with with, with ah, the, Twitch and or Stitch or what the fuck's it called? Twitch. Twitch. The only that reason makes a I huge know, difference. Huge difference. The only reason I know is because my former boss Pete Vasilia at Fox Sports left Fox Sports to be the head of some gaming yeah. like competition team, and we met for lunch, and he was telling me he's like, "Oh, these guys are in the house. They're training. They have a, a chef. They have nutritionists. They work out twice a day." I'm like, "What the fuck?" He's like, "They have uniforms." Like, and he was telling me how much they get paid. I'm like, "Holy fuck!" And he goes, "And this is going on all around, dude. Like, it's le it's a legit career path." And they did they did they must get laid if they're rich and have private chefs and shit. 
Maybe because okay, then I'm I, sure that I'm sure Ninja's getting his dick. I don't I don't fault a 15 year old boy for looking at that life and going, I need to do that. That needs to be me. Because well, if he, I got well, here's paid the problem. big money oh, and pussy million. for video games, I'd be like, yes. Well, here's the problem. Now my dad be like, you're gonna be a loser. You're just gonna stay in your basement all day and play video games and not get outside. And now if I say it to my son, he's like, hey dad, Ninja makes 60 million dollars a year. Shut the fuck up. Like, don't tell me to shut up. All right, have fun. You know, I'd go upstairs. I'd pan. Because like, they have a career I'd, like, path. antique my dad's face with $100 bills after. <laughs> I'd just come out and go, fuck off! <laughs> what? What else you got? Um, This is a sad one. Mm. Regis uh, passed away the other day at the age of 88. He died of natural causes very peacefully in his sleep. That's cool. I'm surprised I didn't chalk up to Corona. That's cool, though. One of the greatest ever. That's cool. I really mean, one you know, he's had a great run, man. Like, 88, <laughs> died peacefully. Like, dude, you're talking about a great... Uh, legendary run he's Amazing a legend career. man one of the greatest for sure and and like it's a kind of a lost art what he is is like now every actor model whatever just becomes a host and few people remember like there was a time and a place where that was a real job and it took real skill at the doing that where he wasn't a stand-up he wasn't a uh -uh. singer he was, but you turned on the camera the or, and you put him in front and he was entertaining. it was a win and it every, was always a win you felt like you knew him everyone could relate to him you know Kind of like Johnny Carson too, you know. He was, like he was in a comic, really, but there's there's something about that man. You can't, those guys you can't teach that. Like no. he he's something that everyone seems to gravitate towards. Have you ever met anybody who doesn't like Regis? I, I mean, have not. Never. I literally have no one not. ever talked shit about him. Ever. Hmm. Never. What else you got? Got this. So um, there is. I think you were talking about it, Brendan, where you're keeping up with the Johnny Depp Amber Heard libel. Really for whatever like, reason. Listen, it's quarantine. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm bored. I get all into this shit, but carry on. So there were a lot of uh, speculations about Elon Musk having an affair with Amber Heard towards the end of her marriage with Johnny Depp, and he's come out said it isn't true. Apparently, Johnny Depp said that he would cut off. Okay. Elon Musk's dick. I'm fucking cut off the dick. <laughs> and Elon Musk found out. He did an interview with New York Times and said that he's willing to fight Johnny Depp. You, you know what? Listen, Elon Musk is my lord and savior. I love the guy. He's brilliant. My problem now with Elon and he flew out, you know, and told Kanye to become president. Now he's offering to fight fucking Johnny Depp. It's like now he's had, you know, it's not enough that he's a billionaire, one of the smartest guys on the planet. He's getting us to Mars and building his fucking Teslas and all this. But now he's had a taste of fame. And I feel like he's trying to. He's going for it. He's going for it. I'm like, oh, that bums me out. Yeah, fame is. You don't want your brilliant minds wanting fame. You don't want that. It is, but it's also, it's also kind of. Um, unavoidable when you're in that situation. I mean, I don't. I don't think Albert Einstein sought it out. It's just some people have that weird charisma, that it factor. And you know, look, twenty thousand. Probably no. Honestly, realistically, have you ever probably, heard Elon a couple, talk? a couple dozen, a couple dozen developers are really responsible for getting Tesla cars on the road. Yes, he's the face. He's the he's, he's the, the you know. And the same thing goes with. E equals mc squared i'm sure i'm sure there was it was a it was this collective idea especially in science everything is built on the backs of people who did it right before you um I, what i want to know is who wins that fight elon you think that what has johnny depp ever done where he's had to fight a human being elon, not, not on film yeah it, you know you're not you're not jack sparrow bitch no he's you come not. in with all those scarves and all your rings and those Jack Sparrow tattoo, and Elon's gonna kick you in your fucking mouth. But I, I think they're both Elon's crazy. lunatics. I think Elon's they're both crazy. lunatics. I think Johnny Depp is lunatic with supplements, meaning yeah. drugs. Yeah. I think Elon's just from a different planet. So what if Johnny Depp hits up a seen. ring, a, a, like a length of a ring choker <laughs> right before he gets in there and just comes in like. I still take Elon. All right. <laughs> All right. And he's big, much bigger. Elon's a big guy. Yeah, yeah. Well, not, yeah. I mean, well, I mean, that's well, you. Can be, well, compared to Johnny Depp, I sat next to him at the uh, at a UFC, pretty, like pretty close to him. I was like, I had no idea. He's he's well over six feet. I didn't know that. I don't want to see either of them fight. Six two. Mm -hmm. Johnny Depp's like shorter than me. Now Johnny Depp versus Jeff Bezos better fight. Oh, I think Bezos fucks them both up. Bezos is five seven, but Bezos is a hard man. Bezos is a hard dude. Is he? You ever seen shirtless Bezos? Well, he's on TRT. So what? So is Joe Rogan. Doesn't mean he can't fuck you up. I'm just saying. Yeah, like, like both. Bezos in good shape. Bezos is a hard man. 
Like he, what he's created, he's not as softy. I'll tell you, who'd fu- I'll, t- I'll tell you who'd fuck up all these people, especially if he was around for TRT, is uh, Steve Jobs. The anger that that man had, he would fuck. There is an anger, up. but Steve Jobs strikes me as the type of guy. Correct me if I'm wrong. You'd know this a lot better than I. He does strike me as the type of guy who gets one good shot in the face and ah, I can't. No, no, <laughs> no. Think? I don't know. Because he's a he's that'd a, be Bill Gates. I see Bill Gates is never getting in the ring. He'd just be like, I don't care. Fine. Well, you I, can I, kick see, my I think ass. Steve Jobs has so much hate. He's gonna walk in with a turtleneck and fuck your world up. <laughs> like, he might know. So, yeah, the, I could see him can knowing. You take some off shit. the turtleneck, and he's like, no, barefoot. He's ready to go at all times. Yep, barefoot with a carrot juice stinky. glass. Yeah, yeah stinky. Smells doesn't like shit. Right. Patchouli stink. What right. else you guys got? Brennan, you mentioned this one. Actress Spencer Grammer, who's also Kelsey Grammer's daughter. I didn't know that. Kelsey Grammer's daughter. Yeah. She's the voice on Rick and Morty. Yeah, sick. I know, right? She's pretty. I, and it's super pretty. I had no idea. This came, she was in New York at, I think, a pizza place, right? A little and eatery. And some crazy dude took out a knife and sliced her arm and her buddy's fucking back. Oh, my God. I she know, tried to dude. stop a fight. So I guess he was yelling at the workers for not serving him because he was obviously drunk or, you know, out of it. So then she wanted them to stop fighting. And then he ended up slashing her arm. Slash her arm, and then the mm-hmm. no arrests have been made. And this is the guy right here. Friend on the Lord, that's him there. Mm-hmm. Do they have video of them slashing? No, just just him outside. It's too short. Jesus <laughs> Christ, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully she. Well, I'm sure they're. Uh, she'll be fine. Yeah, she's smoking, right? I have no go. idea. That's the voice huh. I think of Summer. I want Kelsey. I want Kelsey to go after this dude and fuck him up. I just want <laughs> he's big him. too, isn't he? Yeah, he's big. Man. Yeah. Yeah, she's summer. summer. Hell yeah. In summer. <laughs> in summer. These are two people with kids, as you can tell. Right? Like little kids <laughs> listening to the Frozen soundtrack. Is it bad I let my uh, four and a half year old watch Rick and Morty? No. Nah. It'd be worse to, them. It'd be worse if it was like seven, eight year old. Because I um, sometimes I let my kid watch stuff and I just I know it's not right, but I'm like, she doesn't fucking she doesn't get a idea. thing. It was like a couple years ago. No, yeah, my dad yeah, yeah, yeah. Tiger be like, what, what kind of monster is that? I'm like, all right, well. You're good. Who's this guy? This guy is, uh, I guess his name is Soitiet. <laughs> You're a Vietnamese person. You should know. He's Viet- Vietnamese? He's a Vietnamese guy, and then he's just kind of going viral for his singing. And, and this, uh, how do you make Kurt events? Uh, well, I, I saw him pop up. I think Snoop Dogg or someone uh, posted this. But you just hear him singing. He does He does it with numbers, though. So it's it so pretty weird. amazing. I was like, well, let's see this guy's left way. Like, immediately, like before I even knew what he did, I was like, all right, let's see him headbutt some dude. Nope. <laughs> in, in Laos. <laughs> he does beautiful music. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. In a 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Why is he in the <laughs> way? <laughs> That's slick, right? <laughs> There's some more here. That's all he does is count them? To numbers, yeah. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Yeah, come on. <laughs> he sounds good, right? He actually knows how to sing. Does he? Yeah. I don't know. Is the pitch good? The pitch is it looks great. Like he might be missing a few teeth up top. He does Listen have some teeth to missing. Me now. <laughs> well, English. If yeah. there's not a video of Shab doing this. <laughs> <laughs> by tonight <laughs> I don't know you guys <laughs> check out this harmony yeah one two three four five why did you say six, three seven, like that eight, nine, <laughs> ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. 15 16 17 18 yeah come on one two <laughs> she's she's higher register than him right yeah do you have one where he shows the, Hello, his teeth yes Okay. Right I'm 32 years old. I'm from Vietnam. What's your name? Who are you? And I'm five. <laughs> yep. There you go. I have 17. <laughs> I'll just play a few more. I'm These are fine. Great. I'm doing fine. I'm six foot six and 103 pounds. I lost all my teeth. I had to sell teeth to save my parents. <laughs> I like when he's going one, two, three. I know <laughs> when he turns. Four, five, yeah, six. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, four. Is he good singing, Chin? I think he's know. good. I do. Yeah, yeah. Can, <laughs> I don't know if that was all. Can not sing anything else though. 
No, I mean, he, this is what he's known I think for. Maybe, as when it comes to English, maybe that's all he really, like, numbers is what yeah. he learned, so mm -hmm. he's good at it. What's Let this? me just play a couple, two more. 101, 102, 103, 104, 105. I can't wait till we get to the 200. So here's, here's a so remix. Said, nah, man, you skipped a bunch. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay, this is I think it sounds amazing. So this you know, there's people just collabing with them. One hundred and one, Bangers. And it's he right? bangers. That They're so slapped. good. And is he blowing up? He's blowing oh I mean he's got over a hundred thousand followers now. So this is the last one here. Hello, my name is Tim. Uh. <laughs> I'm coming <laughs> now. Swag. Swag. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> He's great. Yeah, some, like, some dope rapper needs to come in right there. Oh, yes. Know. They will. That, God, I, that I, is, his vibe is I'm great. down with Ted. Yeah, he's happy. Like Ted. Mm -hmm. That was great. <laughs> um, I'll keep One, two, three. <laughs> and you know He's that like, there's like there hasn't been any immature Americans that have gotten access to him yet because he hasn't done 69. <laughs> you know, like, if, if there's one frat bro that got over to Vietnam, he'd be like 69, 69, all right, go to heaven, yeah. 69. <laughs> oh yeah, I don't know what the hell this is, but this is it looks pretty awesome. Check this out. I think it's a kid. <laughs> And watch this. Oh! Crazy, right? What the fuck? Whoa, this little kid just keeps coming back. Wow, that little kid's strong. That was pretty much wow. it. That I don't would know. be the sickest villain in like John Wick or something. Oh, if he used good. his kid as his weapon, he just came. Oh. <laughs> Like in not you guys watch see Nacho Libre when they had the one dude who had like yeah, yeah, yeah. his monkey friend yeah, and he'd yeah. fucking fling each other. That'd be dope. That kid's core strength is insane. <laughs> right? He's just Jesus designed. Christ. Infinite? Do you think it might be like a little person too? I, sometimes I, I think it might think be. So, dude. But it could be a little kid, yeah. All right. It's not a big person. <laughs> it's definitely not we a big can, person. We can establish that. Yeah. Um, I think this is the last one. This is not a big deal though. But so there was a a rare blue lobster inside a lobster tank at Red Lobster, and the workers found out that it was a blue lobster, so they rescued it, Are and now it's at a zoo. Super rare. So look at this. One in every two million. Holy fuck. Oh, shit. And then Thank they just God spotted that it. employees, not some dumbass, yeah. and didn't cook this blue lobster. Mm -hmm. Damn, he's cool looking. How'd they figure out he's blue because it wasn't red <laughs> like the others? Else. Exactly. Wow. When's the last time you had Red Lobster? Uh, Never. Really? Your, your boy ordered Red Lobster last week because my favorite restaurant, Boiling Crab, they have this special. Oh, yeah. Oh, Boiling Crab's so mm. good. They, have you ever had, I forget, it's the shebang shrimp? Yeah, yes. whole shebang shrimp. Shebang you shrimp, that with crawfish. Rice. Yep. For, during the pandemic, just the past week, they decided to shut down, and I've been f jonesing for this fucking shrimp. So I looked up what else is open, Red Lobster. I'm like, All right, I haven't had Red Lobster in, I don't know, 20 years. Mm. Fucking order Red Lobster. It was awful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd never really like heard good. I have nothing against it. I just never really heard good things. And I grew up in the six two six, like with their families. And I like <laughs> Amen. if you if I like the idea of eating shellfish, you wouldn't even that wouldn't even happen that you would go because to it's you go to some place where you have no fucking clue what the, oh, the sure. facade says. You go inside. There's a bunch of dudes chain smoking, mm -hmm. and there's no menu. And you go, what should I order? And your friend goes, oh, don't mind that. Nah, that's not bad guy. And the fucking. <laughs> 17 plates of fucking good <laughs> shit food. comes out and you're like oh okay yeah all right that's that's all i know of like fresh Delicious. seafood you know so, uh, you definitely grew up around yep. asians yeah it's all red lobster and then right. i went to a pool hall yep with a, a, <laughs> mm -hmm. a lot of smoking though and Tons. endless yeah, yeah. endless <laughs> you understand me no, i get it dude yeah it's, it's probably secondhand smoke like a motherfucker endless <laughs> red red lobsters you want a bummer red lobster will bum you out i want my to girls go. never had it so I was like, you've never had a lobster? And it came, I was like, holy shit, I'm sorry. I am so sorry. <laughs> and the shrimp scampi was, I mean, uh, I feel like throwing up thinking about it. It was awful. Mm. Awful. I like had this weird chasm where I grew up in a household that my mom always cooked. And then when I was 
old enough to be on my own i was not in a position where like that shit was available. so i've never been to like olive garden i've never been to red lobster i've never been to any like of the more like That's family chain. you don't want you don't want to go there yeah no, those are bummers. nothing against them i just you know no. No. asian food's the, the spot though for like seafood yeah, yeah they make it real yeah, good no yeah I, I that's it's the true. most the most bastardized cuisines besides Japanese I think sushi's and like legitimate Japanese cuisine has become kind of prevalent in America at least out here but Chinese Korean food it's like what we what most people know of it is fucking so far off way off you know off. like yeah. like like getting you know orange flavored chicken and stuff like people like uh -huh. Ch Chinese food is you know, Chinese food especially is an amazing cuisine that most people don't yeah like know. Panda Express isn't Chinese. <laughs> But if you if you want uh, any advice on Korean barbecue, Chin's an expert. Chin's the man. Yeah. Uh, Korean barbecue's strong, the best. I've only been once. I went with Chin in Seattle. Yeah, that's the problem though. We went to Seattle. That's not where it you was go still pretty good. We yes. got to go out in L.A. But are, is it? It's not. Is it open in the pandemic? I think some places uh, are. You can get it to go for sure, but then they cook it already, which you don't want. We K, -Town, K Town's popping too. Yeah. Like getting uh -huh. getting some good Korean barbecue in K Town. We should do that. Like That'd be fun. fun once they I open know, up. Seriously. Is that it, guys? That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Mike, you're the best, brother. We love you, man. Blow it up. Thank you, sir. Thank you, guys. This is the Fighter in the Mic. We're out.